to have some. Um, but I can tell you, I'm not an engineer and I don't profess to be one. Um, Mr. Pecci is happy with the, um, the modifications and or the changes you made to the plan. There are a couple things, i.e. the light uh, yep. that's, a, that's important that we need to discuss. Um, Mr. Pecci said that that would be left up to the board. There was one other, I'm sorry. It's, uh, I think there was two things, that being one of them. Um, John, I have a real quick question, if I may. Sure. Um, I have a question and a statement. The boat ramp, do you allow the public you to utilize that, or is that just for your use? It's just for the use of the marine customers. Okay. Good. Uh, and also, I want to make a statement. I had said to the people in this audience and others possibly at the prior meeting that this was a new special permit, and I was incorrect. This is a modification, modification of an existing permit, so that's important. <coughs> Other than that, I think I'm in, in reading Mr. Petchy's <coughs> report. I'm satisfied. I think everything has been covered other than the two issues that he raised uh, at the end that it were open issues that this board needs to discuss. And Why don't we read this into the record? It's a two-page. Charlie, would you mind? Do you have a copy of it? Is that the June 26, 2023? Yeah, exactly. And it's got his title on top. Yeah. You want me to read the? You know, yeah, if you would. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, Pesci Engineering and Associates, June 26, 2023, uh, directed to the Mashpee Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, Marianne Romero, Administrative Secretary. Updated engineering review of the proposed special permit modification application at 21 Frog Pond Close and 352 Mashpee Neck Road, Mashpee Mass. Via Ms. Romero and members of the Zoning Board. Pesci Engineering and Associates, Inc. is pleased to provide you with this updated engineering review of the special permit modification application for the proposed parking lot expansion located at 21 Frog Pond Close in 352 Mashby Neck Road, Mashby Mass. As before, I have evaluated the plans for consistency with the town's zoning bylaw and conformance with the Massachusetts Stormwater Management Regulations. I have reviewed the following new information to prepare this letter report. Site plans at 352 Mashby Neck Road, Mashby, Massachusetts, prepared by Capeman Islands Engineering, three sheets dated May 23, 2023, and revised June 14, 2023. This set of plans also includes a lighting photometric plan by others dated June 14, 2023. Landscape design plans for the Leadham residents prepared by Crawford Land Management, two sheets dated March 24, 2023, and revised June 14, 2023. Stormwater Management Report and Design Calculations for the proposed gravel parking and driveway connection at 352 Mashby Neck Road, Mashby Mass, prepared by Cape and Islands Engineering, dated June 9, 2023, and revised June 14, 2023. Letter from Cape and Islands Engineering to Mashby Zoning Board of Appeals, Ray 352 Mashby Neck Road. Response, engineering review of the proposed addition dated 613, 2023 by Pesky Engineering and Associates, Inc. Email response from Mark Bibb to Ed Pesci, Ray 352 Mashby Neck Road, dated June 14, 2023, with revised stormwater water quality calculations attached. Email from Mark Dibb to Ed Pesci, Ray 352 Mashby Neck Road, dated June 13, 2023, with signed and dated Stormwater O&M report, signed June 13, 2023. The applicant's engineer has revised the site plans and has provided additional and revised stormwater calculations, a lighting plan, and revised landscape plans in response to our previous engineering comments dated June 13, 2023. The revised site plans, stormwater calculations, and landscape plans have satisfactorily addressed all of our previous engineering concerns. Engineering review concerns, I'm sorry. According to the response letter from Cape and Islands Engineering, the applicant has also accepted my recommended conditions listed as items five and six of my June 13, 2023 review letter 
under the site plan layout and utility section. However, I have the following final comments. <clears throat> I recommended that all revised site plans and landscape plans have the stamps and signatures by the appropriate design professionals in order to have the proper record plans in the ZBA file. Two, in the June 14th email comments and correspondence with Mary Ann Romero and Mark Dibb, I mentioned that the revised plans show a new pole-mounted lighting in the proposed overflow parking area. I made a comment about how the photometric plan shows the spillage of light greater than 1.0 foot candle onto the vacant parcel to the north. Not knowing whether this property will be developed in the future, I recommended that guards or shields be provided to avoid excess spillage of light to this parcel above one foot uh, candle. The email response from Mark Dibb mentions that this light will be removed. However, subject to the discretion of the board, I recommend that this light pole remain for safety and that the light fixture simply be fitted with the guards or shields to reduce the spillage of light to the adjacent parcel. Thank you again for this opportunity to assist the Zoning Board in the review of this project. And as always, please call or email me if you have any questions or comments. Sincerely, Pesci Engineering and Associates, Ed Pesci. And just to identify, uh, Pesci Engineering is an independent engineering firm that the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals can call upon to answer questions that we're not qualified to answer. And Mark Dibb is the engineer uh, for the uh, proposed Roger. developer of, of this yeah. project. Would you uh, talk about the two final comments that he had, first being the revised site plans, landscape plans, have the stamps and signatures by the appropriate design professionals, et cetera? So the first comment um, that excuse me, plan set you have in front of you. Um, you'll see every sheet has a revision date of, I believe, 627-23, issued for permit, and then the appropriate stamp on each one, including even landscape architect stamps on the Crawford Land Management Plan. So we feel we have satisfactory um, <clears throat> responded to that comment. And then the second one, uh, if you go to sheet uh, for the photometric plan, that plan already reflects a shielded light fixture. Um, I'm sorry, that's it's sheet three. That's the detail sheet. Um, you'll see along that northerly property line, the the, the lumens uh, that are at the edge of that property line are now at 0.1 or zero off the off it versus they were in excess of 1.0 it's <coughs> i could point it out to you if you need it but um we do have also a there was just an email confirmation i believe from ed that he was he was all set we could so you're leaving leaving the pole and it's got the shield yes correct so you're doing exactly what he asked yes correct. so if a motion were to say satisfactory dealing with mr petchy's comment in reference to lighting you feel you've already done that correct thank you anybody want to see it to wait for oh, we can move it Absolutely. We'll, 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 we'll. yeah we're also going to we're not going to read it into the record now but there's four typed pages on the letter dated June 14th from Cape and Islands Engineering and responses to all the questions and concerns. So that will go in the file. Oh, record. Absolutely. Okay. So that's good. Um, May I have a have copy of the O&M? Can you, does, do we have a copy of the O&M here? You should have a signed hard copy. I think we do. And presumably you put, well, I would, I would hope you put that on record at the time with a special permit or the modification. We can. That would be great. Especially agreed with the owner. Yeah. No, I just wanted to see it myself because I mean, I have a <coughs> flow chart of them. Looks like good reading. Oh, I know. So if, if there were a motion made and that motion were to say, certainly uh, before you apply for a billing, but the 
modification has to be recorded along with the O and M. You're okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, it's two pages typewritten and signed on the bottom by Timothy W. Freedom, trustee. Oh, great reading. Six thirteen twenty three. And there's their actual form on the back as well. So this oh. that'll be fair. Yep. How many are there? Well, those are the same. They're all the same? Yeah, yeah. and then the last page. Flip it all the way to the end. Oh. <clears throat> Scott, you interested in this? <laughs> well, there's more you're doing. Pass them Good reading. <laughs> Well, using these O and M's, it states that somebody's going to inspect the site someday. I get concerned over that. I'd rather see a registered engineer inspect in a given specific time. And I presume this O and M says that. Does it state that a registered engineer will inspect and not somebody? I. I don't believe it says a registered engineer. It says the required time, and then there's a form on the back. So that, and, and even even like state SWIPs and things like that, the, the registered engineer can train a applicant's right. worker to, to do those inspections. Well, the last four or five O&Ms that I have in my possession that I've been reviewing that I have, I'm actually tracking them. So I make a Excel spreadsheet so I can understand if the next main, main, main event, I'm going to flip through them. And most of them, if not all of them, say, and uh, my mistake or our mistake, whatever, it says somebody will inspect them. And I, that's just, to me, no, no, no. I, I, you know, I shouldn't be inspecting them because I don't have the ability to inspect them. So I believe it should be somebody such as yourself. I presume you're a registered engineer. I guess you, I think you are. Is that be qualified? Yeah. Well, but I don't even want to leave a gray area for qualification. I want to be specific and say a registered engineer will inspect. Is, I mean, it what's a big deal? is it required that a registered engineer has to it, do it though? It, it, well, it's an O and M, so it's whatever we sign off on doing. Technically, correct me if I'm wrong, we can do our own O&M that says we require an engineer to do that inspection, and we could require that to be done monthly. That's up to this board. I mean, I think that could be a requirement, but I, I could also, it, I could train you to I don't, I don't, I'm not easy to, talk. <laughs> <laughs> to, to do these, that's the intent, even the state level SWIP permits allow training of individuals that are on the site daily to... Well, let, me, let me help this. I think this will help. So I had this long dissertation with Mr. Pesci early on in the process, and I was talking about many things. I'm not going to go through them now. And his protection for me was, we're going to make sure this O&M is airtight. And I shared with him some of my concerns. Someday we'll inspect with somebody. That doesn't work for me. Um, it just doesn't work for me. And so I think for this site, specifically with, a, with the concerns that I had and Mr. Petchy saying, I get you. Um, so we've got, we, I'll prepare an O&M that, you know, thumbs up. I'm a little concerned that it didn't specifically state an engineer, but I, yeah, again, I'm not, I'm not Mr. Petchy and I'm not, I don't have his ability. But frankly, as one board member, I think the O&M should say, I'm not gonna change its required timing, but I think the person should be, you know, an engineer. I mean, I don't think, I mean, if, if... At least qualified in some way. I mean, you could have your eight-year-old son go out and do it. Uh, you know but, what I'm saying? I, it's so wide open. I know, but a maintenance person that works on the site daily should be able to tr be trained by... But an it engineer. doesn't even say that on here. Okay. It's so wide That's, open. Yeah. We can, is Mr. Petschke asking for that? No. So, no. He's, so, Mr. so this is the... Uh, this is the fifth O&M that I will look at, and presumably, I didn't look at this one because I was hoping that I didn't have to look at this one, but I guess I did. My, I'm bad. I get it. <coughs> what I've said to Mr. Pecci, I actually said to Mr. Pecci, uh, what I'd like to see in the future is an O&M prepared for, let's say, a rain garden for this board, and I didn't have the authority to do so, so I had to, I had to, you know, I, I ran it by Jonathan because he's the chairman. And so my point is, is we should have as a board ONMs for various aspects of drainage, rain gardens, blah, 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 that we can institute and hand to you instead of you handing to us. I think it's better that way. I really do. I, because 
I've got four others, I'm, I'm being tried, but I've got three or four others that are like, somebody will do something someday. That doesn't work for me. So, I so what how I would can we say, manage this? So what I would say to the board is that I don't think at this stage, I don't think Tim cares if it says, you know, either a registered engineer or, or somebody qualif or otherwise qualified person. Something more specific than what it is, I'm all for. That's fine. And so, I'll just get you to so All right, so. So I would just, what I guess I would suggest to the board, if the board were to, were inclined to approve the project and to condition it, that they can condition that on a revised O&M plan with a revised language, whatever <clears throat> paragraph that is, stating that the language would be changed, that it would be inspected uh, based on those time frames by a registered engineer or otherwise qualified person. That works for me. Easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, that would be great. Um, I'm not even seeing specifically where it's located in the O&M. Owner designated or will maintain a copy of the construction zone. I mean, only authorized by the owner shall maintain or operate the drainage system. So, I presume that's the line that we have to amend? Drainage components. Yes. Is that the line? Only authorized personnel by the owner shall maintain or operate the drainage system? Is that the line that we have to amend? No, I think it's, you're talking about inspections. Well, that's correct, but I don't see anything in here that names the person, and I could be wrong, because i just reading it now, um, where it states the person that's going to fulfill this obligation. It says the uh, first paragraph, last sentence, the owner or designated representative will be responsible for maintenance and operation of, of the drainage system. system. And these are the maintenance requirements. Yes, yeah, so the owner or designated representative. So we, we can shall. define owner or designated representative as an engineer or someone qualified to do such Correct. inspection Which, and maintenance. Yeah, so it would be the owner or designated representative, which shall be a registered engineer or qualified professional responsible be, for. Go, engineer or... Qualified professional. professional. <clears throat> so if I am asked to ask them to make a motion, I may ask for help. Okay. You're going to use this as yeah. the amended. Right. Gotcha. to that document, and that will be the one we stand. Okay. Um, a comment and a question. Um, the comment, just so I understand it, is that the initiation of this project in terms of application and review started with the, uh, the plan review meeting. Recommendations were made by various people in various departments in our community. Um, all of which have been complied with with the addition to Ed Pesci's report. The only, the only entity that you have not yet been before is the Conservation Commission, and that's scheduled for tomorrow night. That is correct. So whatever we do here in terms of our vote should also be subject to approval of the project by the Conservation Yep. Absolutely. No, we have no problem with that. Okay, fine. That's, that's all I have. And then I would just, as the board usually does, if the conservation requires any changes to the plans, that we would have to come yes, back. Yes, sir. Nope. So I was thinking of this the other last night. So historically, the motions include something to the effect, like you just said, that any change to these plans will require the applicant to come back to this board. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens if the, board, if the Conservation Commission asks you to do a mitigation plan, which is not part of our plan approval? You then change the plans for a mitigation plan. You add shrubs, you whatever. And do you feel that's a change to our plans? You do? I would say that I would come back under the, 
The, the bylaw has a provision for, you know, you're well aware of this now from me, these minor modifications. So I said something like a landscape plan could be administratively approved by the board. But you, would believe, you believe it would still have to come back to this board, even though it's an inclusion of a new plan? It, what do you mean inclusion? Well, because you go to conservation and say, we want a mitigation plan. And so you draft a new plan, which is not part of our plan set. Right. So does that mean you're modifying or changing our plans? The, sh the sheets one and two by CLM, which are in that document, are landscape the plans, mitigation yeah. and landscape well, plans. But let's say you make sheet, let's say your last sheet is 10. Let's say you make sheet 11 for conservation. Yeah. Heading, conservation plan. I'm, I'm just yeah. asking this for you and other reasons. Are we conditioning it already by what conservation is requesting? Well, this says it's... This is a little bit different question he's asking. Yeah, so this is, historically, the motion says any change to our plans, mm -hmm. or our approval, let's say our plans, mm -hmm. will require the applicant to come back to this board. I agree with he that. He now adds a, another page to this, because conservation says we want to have a mitigation, page 12, that clearly depicts wetland lines, blah, blah, blah. I'm just trying to get your, your agreement to the fact that that would be, be the statement would, I'm looking for is, yes, that would be a change to <coughs> the plans, be even a, though they're not included. Right. You could say it's a, a change to the plan set that's been approved by the board. Right, and I agree that it could be a minor modification. We yeah. won't know until we see it. Correct. Right. That's if they do change it. Correct. But it would require you to come back. Yep, understood. I have no problem with that. I see that question being asked in, in a lot of applications. Anybody else? I, mean, I guess I would just, I'm just buttressing what Charlie had said. You know, we did go from site plan review. Site plan review has the fire department, the police department, DPW, Conservation Commission, um, Board, of Health. Board of Health, Town Planner. Uh, I know Mr. Bondi was at that meeting as a representative of the public and member of the board. So it was well, well reviewed by the various department heads. Right. And David. I didn't want to forget David. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to read these in, but there is a, it'll go into the record. Um, plan review recommendations dated June 6th, additional to the town planner comments. They're all bullet points. They're all included in the proposed motion. Yep. There's also the two-page letter from Evan Lear. Yep. Very detailed. All of that <coughs> is incorporated into the, this, into the motion. Into the motion. So this is all going in there. Okay. You got that all? Well, that was to all town departments. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you guys are killing me. <coughs> all right. Anybody else? Nope. That's already in the motion. Okay. That's Before we go to public comments, why don't we read in the comments from the different boards, and then we'll open it up to public comments. You have those in front of you? I'm not sure I have all of them, John. Yeah, let's see. I got. What about this pattern? Yeah, I'm not. I got more paper here. Than... Yeah, I don't think that needs. What a help doesn't have anything. Thank you. Yeah. Charlie, I got them right here. Okay, I, I have conservation right here, Johnson. Charlie, in case you don't. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Bill. <clears throat> okay, conservation comments. Uh, <clears throat> Daniel Kent, Monday, June 26, 2023, to Mary Ann Romero, relative to 21 Frog Pond and 352 Mashby Neck. Uh, I will review the plans and update the comment tomorrow. And tomorrow is the meeting of conservation. Um, health agent dated June 27th, 2023. Uh, I don't see that there's any comment from the I health. got a board of health comments, and I don't even see. I'm not the yeah, I just listed it. You can list them no board of health. No board of health. They didn't even okay. say no comment. There's just nothing. There's no board of health regarding the septic? Not on this. 
No. 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 Well, you know, they were part of the plan review. Correct. Right. So there's no it's all in there. No right? independent set. All right. Anything else there? Okay. Uh, I have a comment from um, from Evan, uh, which is also part of the plan review information. Is it this two-page type letter? I'm not going to read that in, but no. You know, I can read the high that as part of the. I'm going to read this part of it. Okay, it, uh, from uh, this goes back to June 5th, June. 2023, from oh, Evan. This is May 23rd. Uh, Lira, to Mary Ann Romero. Under my recommendations for accessory uses, I forgot to contemplate the use of the 352 Mashby Neck property as offices for the marina. I see no issue with the use of a portion of the dwelling as an office. Any building code or Title V related issues relative to the use, I will defer to the Commissioner and Health Agent. I want to be sure that any recommendations to the Board of Appeals to restrict accessory uses does not include a restriction on the establishment of an office for the marina. Please notify Attorney Corain of this amendment to my previous email as well as Chair Fortish. Okay. And uh, the only other thing I have is the uh, uh, from the uh, uh, from the harbor master, uh, Robert uh, Tomeno, June 9th, 2023, to Mary Ann Romero. Uh, Mary Ann, we have had no issues whatsoever at the marina itself. The staff, as well as management, run everything very smoothly, and we work extremely well together. On busy weekends, I've never observed a single issue with regard to parking partying or out of control patrons. I've observed staff managing the parking lot and the docks themselves. Any other questions or concern, please don't hesitate to reach out. That's it. Okay. I'm looking at a letter from Evan Lehrer, town planner, dated May 23rd to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, reference 352 Mashby Neck Road slash 21 Frog Pond Close. Special permit modification. It's two pages typed, but <clears throat> the start of it says, upon review of the subject petition, I noted zoning related conflicts that, the imp that impact the property owner's request related to additional parking area intended to serve the existing marina. I've conferred with town council on the subject, and he has affirmed the planning department's opinion of the facts. One, subject parcels are held in separate ownership. 21 Frog Pond Close is owned by 21 Frog Pond Close LLC, and 352 Mashby Neck Road is owned by the trustee of the Shoes. Drain Bay Nominee Trust 2. Number two, Mashby Zoning Bylaw 174-25-H8 in parentheses, prohibits parking lots in the R3 Zoning District that are not accessory to another principal use on the same lot. We've talked about that already. As submitted under the existing circumstances, there's no legal basis upon which the ZBA could modify special permit to include 352 Mashby Neck Road. This was back in May, though. So all of this has been addressed. If you'd like to comment on that. Yeah, so when we talk to town planner, town planner's recommendation would that be we would have to uh, put the, both lots in the same ownership. We have done that. Uh, we provided the board with a copy of the deed. Now both properties are owned by the 20, well, 21 Frog Plunk Close LLC. So that removes that concern of the uh, of town planner. Okay. Um, I have one more email from Evan, dated June 14th. 
Uh, it's an email, and it was to Marianne. And it says, I'm satisfied with the plan revisions, ingress and egress to Mashpee Neck lot in Toronto. Screening shows Eastern Red Cedar. Properties are held in common. All of my other uh, comments pertain to conditions that aren't shown on the plan, but listed in the written decision. The board may choose to accept, modify, or reject any of my proposed conditions. Please ensure that any and all that they choose to accept are appropriately and clearly noted in the written decision. Thanks, Evan. And this was dated two weeks ago. So I don't have anything else. Anybody before we Nothing. open it up? Okay. Why don't we open it up to public hearing again? If you've already spoken, please don't speak again. And, and there'll be no giving minutes away. So whoever's first, raise your hand. Come right up, sir. And just give us your name and address for the record. <coughs> Happy to have your comments. Yeah, thank you. Hi, my name, <coughs> excuse me. Let me line up with this microphone a little bit, okay? Um, my name is uh, Mike Fox, and uh, I live on Far Pond Close. And um, <clears throat> I did write this letter to the town manager, and he said he was going to distribute it to you. Have you seen it? We've got a bunch of emails. And I'm going to read this it. Is a, this is a letter that was actually directed to Rodney Collins. Okay. I'll you don't find have out it? afterwards. But go, go right ahead. Okay. But he, he suggested very strongly that I read it into the record. Okay? Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Dear Mr. Collins, thank you for the opportunity to comment with respect to the application before the Mashpee Zoning Board of Appeals requesting a modification of an existing special permit of the marina and expand to include the adjacent property at 352 Mashpee Neck Road. My family and I have maintained a summer residence at 63 Frog Pond Close for over 25 years and thoroughly enjoyed our time there and have also been avid boaters during this period. We are very familiar with the operation and substantial growth of the facility from a family marina to a sprawling enterprise. I will try to be brief in my comments but I have some significant issues with this proposal. They include the following. One, the Zoning Board of Appeals has not received input from many neighbors on Frog, Frog Pond Close. I was never informed, nor were many of my neighbors informed by the applicant of this application. There was no consultation with us or any attempt by him to obtain our input. This, unfortunately, was the same approach taken by the applicant and more than doubling the size of the marina to 154 slips a short time ago. It is very disappointing that the applicant has consistently ignored the concerns of his neighbors as he has pushed forward with ongoing rapid and substantial expansion of the marina. Two, why does the routing of traffic to Frog Pond Close solve the traffic issue? In his testimony to the Zoning Board of Appeals on June 14th, the attorney for the applicant, Christopher Corain, stated that he had alleviated concerns for the traffic on Mashpee Neck Road by providing for all access through Frog Pond Close. I don't think this makes any sense. First, what gives Mr. Corain and the applicant the right to assume that they can unilaterally choose to direct traffic over Frog Pond Close, a private road? without consulting its owners in obtaining their input and permission. Frog Pond Close is, in fact, a much narrower road than Mashpee Neck Road with curves and blind spots. This is clearly a health and safety issue for all residents of Frog Pond Close. This is not to suggest that Mashpee Neck Road is an appropriate point of access either. But I find it interesting that, again, the applicant purposely presented this alternative, knowing that none of the owners of the road, including myself, have been made aware of this option by the applicant. I would have assumed that a good neighbor dealing in good faith would pursue a constructive dialogue. 
with those obviously most affected by this application, but this was clearly not the case. Three, why is the approval of this application being given serious consideration given the health and safety and environmental concerns surrounding the applicant's business? I have personally seen the marina grow from a family marina of less than 70 slips to a very large enterprise of 154 slips. The number of slips, however, do, does not really measure the impact of the marina on Shoestring Bay and the local marine environment. Under previous owners, the boats at the marina were generally small and basic. Today, the boats at the marina are generally much larger with multiple engines and significantly more horsepower, further adding to the contamination of the bay. As one who has lived on Shoestring Bay for a long period of time and personally observed its demise, I believe that it is absolutely imperative that we protect the waterway from any further damage. Mr. Levin stated in his testimony on June 14th to the ZBA that we don't have a parking problem if we continue to do what we're doing. We have not lost any customers over this. He also states anecdotally that this is a potential issue only six or eight sad days during the summer. <clears throat> If the applicant's operation and economic return in the marina will not, by his own admission, suffer any adverse consequences by the rejection of this application, but the health and safety of local residents will be protected or enhanced by such action, then it's very clear to me that this application should not be approved. The marine scale is already too large for the neighborhood, including Pirate's Cove. Four. While additional parking requested in the application clearly is not necessary, it serves as a Trojan horse for additional storage of boats and additional revenue and profit for the applicant. The marina is clearly first and foremost an enterprise designed to maximize profits with little regard for any adverse impact on, on our community. It has, it has itself attested to this fact by squeezing in 154 slips into a relatively small footprint while dominating and detracting from the natural beauty of Shoestring Bay to fully optimize its economic returns. This expansion of available slips while approved by the ZBA was done with minimal, if any, consideration by the applicant of the neighbors most affected by such expansion. As detailed above, Mr. Leadham has stated that his additional parking request is not necessary for the ongoing operation of the marina. It would therefore seem that Mr. Leadham's real objection, uh, objective in acquiring the lot adjacent to the marina and bringing it under the umbrella of a special existing permit is to increase his boat storage capacity by a minimum of 32 additional boats and reap additional profits from hauling, storage, shrink wrapping, fueling, and providing other additional services with respect to these boats. He, in fact, stated in his June 14th testimony that he has a very significant demand from his existing customers for such storage. The transportation of these additional boats, many of which will be quite large, presents an unnecessary risk to the health and safety of the residents of Frog Pond Close, Mashby Neck Road, Pirates Cove, and all adjacent neighborhoods. Shrink wrap boats on stands surrounded by a stockade fence will further detract from the Mashby Neck road landscape and environment, including Frog Pond itself, which is located directly across from the marina, and will also affect neighborhood property values. In summary, due to the critical considerations above, this request to modify the existing special permit of the marina should be rejected under the applicable statute since, if approved, it would clearly have a significant adverse impact on the health and safety of the citizens of Mashpee while adversely impacting traffic flows, traffic safety, local waterways, and neighboring properties. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Anybody else? At the end, if we have some time. Okay, at the end, if we have some time, I'm going to make sure that we get everybody that hasn't spoken. Okay, we're not going to share minutes. We're not going to share minutes. Okay. What is your What is your name and address? Yeah. 
we have your letter and you've already spoken, but thank you. This is something different. Okay, I'm going to have anybody that hasn't spoken. <clears throat> Come right up. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Bill Lovely. I live at 45 Frog Pond Close. Uh, this is to kind of piggyback on what um, Mike Fox just uh, iterated. The, uh, the town planner provided comments to the planning to the planning board, and one of his comments was that the applicant should demonstrate the necessity of the required number of parking spots. And I, I don't. I've, I've sat through the meetings. I've never heard him justify 34 parking spots. Uh, in fact. Mike just stated that he said over time over time that he can operate just the way he is. So I don't know if the, uh, if the zoning board has considered the, the number of parking spots that he's asking for, because uh, it's, it's his onus to prove that, that he needs those. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No. I'd like to ask one question. No, come up and, if okay. you would, and give us your name and address for the record. Okay. I'm Elaine Coronella at 23 Buccaneer Way, Mashpee. I'd like to know how many of the boat slip owners, or renters, whatever you consider them, how many of them are from Mashpee? Uh, how many from? We'll find out. Okay. Afterwards. And I'll have you address that afterwards. What was the last name on that? <coughs> you spell? Oh, I got it. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, we're gonna at the end. I'm gonna try and. Okay, you enter the meeting, though, sir. Yeah. Yeah, after all the okay, comments, thank you. Thank he's going to address it Fine. rather than up, down, thank up, you down. Much. Sure. Come right up. The person <coughs> behind you. Hi, my name is David Capitosto. I live at 171 Captain's Row in Mashpee. Um, in previous meetings, uh, Mr. Liedem has uh, mentioned about um, a purchase and sales agreement that he has with the previous owner about not doing rack storage at this parking lot, all right? Since he has transferred the ownership from one entity to another, I'd just like to know, I, I, could he expand on uh, how that still affects us, all right? Can he now do rack storage? We don't know. We haven't seen the purchase and sales agreement. We don't know what was in there, all right? And now that it's changed hands, is that purchase and sales agreement still an enforceable thing? We don't know. Okay. I think this is something that you should look into, and I think that we need a bylaw in this town with no rack storage. Okay. Thank you. What's the last name? Come right up. Hello. I'm Mary Fox, 63 Frog Pond Close. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Um, I just wanted to know, um, I have this question that a neighbor of mine uh, gave me today, and there's some question about One Water Marine Holdings. Um, I just wondered if they have any relationship to what's going on here. Is this just a family business with Tim Liedem, or the, is there other people involved in this, One Water Marine Holdings being one of them? Because I <coughs> see back uh, way back 60, 
I don't know when they were, um, well, several years back, they were acquired, they acquired Bosons Marine. And they're a big conglomerate that goes around and they have quite, according to my neighbor, they have quite a few marinas that they manage. So I just wanted to know if they have any, um, um, what is, if any, is their involvement in this project? And I also want to know if there are any board members or family members of, on boards or various boards that are members of the marina or have any relationship to any holding companies that might be involved in this project. I come here and I'm very concerned because I feel like almost it's a done deal listening to everyone here. And I really feel that you really need to listen to the residents of their concerns of the environment. I will have done Frog Pond close. We've lived there over 25 years. Since the marina has expanded, we, it was a small marina when there, we were there, owned by Bob Scozari. It's expanded to 154 slips, many cars coming up and down our street. They don't necessarily come <coughs> down Mashpee Neck Road. We are a private road. We have nine other residents besides the marina. We are responsible for maintaining the road, the wear, the tear. We have had people put signs out, children, you know, because they're concerned of the speed of the, of the cars going in and out of the marina. Not only are there cars, there have been golf carts coming from various neighborhoods up and down our street, past our house, not coming up Mashpee Neck Road, so they're coming down public roads through Quaker Run, through Lighthouse Lane, through Frog Pond Close, entering the marina. And I have actually spoke to um, some of the people on the golf carts. Not only are they adults, they're children. They're not even of age, turning into the marina. Now, I don't know what that was about, whether, but I, I just don't know what that's about. But that's a safety issue right there, OK? The other thing is conservation. I spoke to them today. I have been calling. I called Drew several times. I, want, I knew when um, this expanded to 154, no one in our neighborhood was notified. You have to know that. Not one person on Frog Pond Close, our private road, like they were coming through your driveways, all of your driveways. Not one call, not one car, not nothing to the neighborhood. Now, if you're family oriented, <laughs> We're families in that neighborhood. They're families in Pirates Cove. We're families, and, and this impacts not only our neighborhoods, the cars, the, the boats and the trailers come up Simon Narrows, they come all the way in several neighborhoods. But our road is a private road. So would anybody like to have 154 boats traveling in and out and cars in their private driveway through their private land? Would you, any of you? This is how it's impacted our neighborhood, and it's dangerous. Furthermore, the conservation aspect, I talked to Dan today, because I didn't get back to Drew, I didn't hear back from him, but um, I know when this did expand, I went down there and I noticed that all the shrubs and trees, many have been taken down on the embankment abutting Frog Pond Close, and also on the Houston property. Now, I talked to Tim many years, a couple years back, they, that was supposed to be relandscaped. To this day and time, it hasn't been relandscaped. Oh, I see the trees being pruned up. I see some with tags on them. But none of that has been done. Furthermore, there's a dip in the road there. There's a conservation frog pond across the street from the entrance to the marina. It's conservation land. When it rains, there's enormous amount of sand that ends up right by the entrance to the marina. It sits there. If you come by in the summer or if it's been raining, go by in a rainy day. All the boats and cars come in there. It's never swept away, and it's swept into, well, his side and to the conservation side. So there's a conservation issue. As far as the waterway goes, Shoestring Bay, I can honestly say last year has been the most horrible year of boat traffic coming through Shoestring Bay. We are polluted. When we lived there 25 years ago, we could swim there. My kids would swim across to Katua. It's dirty. It's polluted. It smells in July. It's loaded with algae blooms. 
this boat extra traffic, they're not just going out to Nantucket Sound to the spit. They're coming up and down, cruising up and down Frog Pond, up and down Shoestring Bay, and speeding. We've asked the harbor master to replace the no wake signs that were there that haven't been there the past three or four years, and they're supposed to do that. But that doesn't resolve the issue of the waterways and the pollution and the algae blooms and the constant run-up of, of these boats. It doesn't seem like anybody's respecting Shoestring Bay. And Thank you. maybe they don't even know what a no-wake sign is when it goes up. Because in, in Massachusetts, you don't have to take a boating course. I'm from Connecticut originally. You have to take a boating course. Thank you. So that's, I mean, these are my concerns. And I'm, I'm very, I'm just very saddened by all this. And I, I am not for <clears throat> variance. I'd like to see it stop. I'd like to see it stop. I'd like to see some some listening to the neighborhood and the impact and listening and, and looking at the environment and looking at what's happened to the waterways in, in our town. And we need to protect that. We really okay. do. Well, and we and do we're need, not doing that. We do, we do need to move on. Okay, thank you very thank much you. for your time. Okay, who's next? Anybody else? Okay, come up. You'll be the last speaker, I guess. Okay. And you've, you're Beth Hennessy. Beth I see Hennessey. you spoke before. Yes. So if you could. Yes, and, and in this petition, there are things that have already been addressed, including um, Mr. Leadham's remarks at the last hearing that he, he didn't really need the parking. He was fine the way he was. It was just a convenience for his customers. Um, but I agree with what Mr. Fox said, that this is a Trojan horse, um, because I watched the January 8th, 2020 hearing where the 154 was approved. And at that hearing, Mr. Leadham indicated that the expansion at that time was the first of several phases that he intended to do. Um, I understand that he has to have 77 parking spaces to meet the town requirement. And those 77 parking spaces are currently in the lower lot. I understand that he wants 32 or 35 more spaces on the upper lot. And what I don't want to see is him offloading the some of the 35 spaces from the lower lot to the upper lot to still have his 77 as required by the town and then thus freeing up space in the lower lot to construct a building which at the January 6, 2020 meeting he indicated that he intended to do. Um, I don't want to see that the commercialization of that marina in our neighborhood. Um, and <coughs> so I'm in this petition, we are asking for a special condition that parking spaces, since his justification for asking for the parking was that he needs overflow, that parking spaces 1 through 77 must remain in the lower lot. And once those are filled, then he can give spaces 78 through 110 at the upper lot. And any violation of that because at the January 8th hearing in 2020, there was an issue and a promise from Mr. Leadham and his attorneys relative to permitting some sheds on the property that was never fulfilled. We are over three years later. So to put some teeth into this condition, I have said any violation of any terms in the special permit that may be issued by this board constitutes the owner's agreement that he will cede ownership of the property formerly known as 352 Mashpee Neck Road to the town of Mashpee for the purpose of creating a public space. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> okay, one final call. Anybody else before we hear some? Answers. Yeah. Um, should we close the public comment section of this I think, at this point? I think
I think he needs to answer those questions. To respond. And then we need to close, I would think. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I want to address the last comment and one of the other comments um, relative to the rack storage. So we have come before this board stating that we will not do any rack storage and if the board were to approve this project they could put that as a condition of this special permit so that would certainly have much more teeth than any purchase and sale agreement if i were asked to make a motion it would include the following statement yep. no boat rack storage will be allowed that is that's correct. in perpetuity unless they amend this permit and have to come <laughs> that is correct back. so no issue with that um as to the first part of miss hennessy's um comment we would not have any problem with a condition that stated that this was overflow only, that all that the first 77 had to be filled before you could start using parking on the upper level. However, I will not agree to a condition that says a violation cedes ownership of the property. <laughs> so state your so overflow parking only. Overflow parking only. So my once the to be used once yeah, the seventy seven. Once, once the built. parking on twenty one fraud close has to be used up first, then you can use the overflow. So when parking. they start to pull out of the seventy seven, correct. The new cars go into mm -hmm. right. All right. So overflow parking only. And so this parking area can only be utilized. Once the 77 lot existing parking lot is full. Yes, on 21 front pond close, if you want to. And, and, and if, they if somebody naked, shows up, they after, have to be refilled before you go. After they start it, it's going to be refilled. Well, we're not going to move cars down. <laughs> <laughs> what? Enforcement is impossible. Yeah, we're not going to. Okay. If there's a parked car already up there, we wouldn't be moving no, it down. No, I'm not asking okay. you to. But if a spot opens up. A new up, car comes in, and yes. They, 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 don't, they don't go up there. Correct. That's they fair. filled a spot that was vacated yeah, out of the 77. And I think that's fair. That's fine. Not a big deal. Yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. And then I guess the only other thing can, I would Can we stop with that one, please? If someone were asked to ask to make this motion, <laughs> could we make sure that I, that I got this right, please? <laughs> yeah. I only have overflow parking only. Right. Fill in from there, please. So there are currently 77 spaces? Yeah. Right. Can I just, just from an employee standpoint, this is overflow parking. But I just asked that when this be worked out by the board and my attorney, that I, I can see things being very difficult. The 77 get filled, some people go up. Ten people leave from the lower lot. Someone comes in and says, you parked there first because I see spaces down here. I mean, there has to be some. We want you to do your best to make yeah, sure. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. This, this is what this is. And the 77 spaces no, are staying. They're being used. I don't think anybody from the Mashpee police is going to be in well, the trees looking to make sure. Well, but there will be a million for calls a guarantee for him. from you. You can see it coming. <laughs> I think you make best effort to continue to fill the lower lot before you utilize the upper lot. So, yes, that's this fine. Is that's overflow parking this only and should be for. utilized only as such as when the 77 lot parking lot is full, this parking lot can then be utilized. Right. And I think. From a standpoint of one person leaves there, the 77, and then all of a sudden Somebody that pulls person, in, they go to the I don't think you can go anywhere near that conversation because you just can't oversee that. You can't have a guard, uh, an attendant standing there. Well, all I, that's all I'm saying. I, I get a practical standpoint. I mean, you make best. Effort. I think the you minutes of this meeting are part of the meeting, right? So it's important for the people in the audience to understand that. That's very important. But I think it's also important for you to understand that if 20 people leave the 77. And they, for that day, they've left the 77 parking lot. You need to say to that overflow, hey, get over there, right? Well, they're out on their boat. Well, all right. No, no. How do, you, you can't oh, move their car. Saying. They're on their boat. Well, that's a problem. No, I don't no, see it. They, they, then they leave the end of the day. Not at all. So what he just said, correct me if I'm wrong, is what so I'm saying 20, is that 50 people leave the 77 uh, area parking lot. Right. right. 50 right. So now it's not less than half full. Right. The and overflow it, parking is also full or almost full. And, yep. you, and the residents say, wait a second. You can't do this that. This is how it's going to work. No, no, no. When, yeah, if somebody comes in and there's something available in the 77, 
That's where they park. That's where they park. So yeah, don't go up there. Yeah. That's you can't you control don't go where people leave. Unless there's no spaces on the lower lot. Right. As right. people leave, it's exactly they're right. going to just refill the lower so lot. How does that? How do you? Re, how do you state that motion? You just did. There's, there's no overflow. Right. There's no overflow. Oh, overflow parking only. Right. And. Refilling of, refilling of spaces as they in the lower lot on the lower lot become available. Occur. First. Really, refilling of spaces what as the they lower become available lot first as they open first, up right. if available on the lower they lot be, first as, as they become available, as available. Right. so you're so saying the following overflow parking only, only. Lot this lot is side. overflow parking only overflow parking only and refills. Yep, applicant will use best efforts to refill. <clears throat> no lot as spaces become available. Correct. You got that? Please. Please, you're out of order. We're done with that. We're having a discussion. Please. Uh, well, let's work it out. We'll, we'll, uh, before. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I didn't. So, <coughs> we'll get We'll get it. We'll get the level. Yeah. I think that works. Don't make it. Yeah. Okay. So, because this lot shall be over for overflow parking only. That's the beginning. Correct. The refilling of the 70 of this lot shall be only upon. Full capacity of full the lower capacity lot. of the existing seventy-seven lot. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. But you're not going to keep people move. Yeah. From right. You can't do the that. upper lot to the lower lot. No, they're not there yeah. to move. They're on their boat. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. We're trying to, you know, okay. do our best to uh, to satisfy the, the concerns. Um, One of the concerns I heard I want you to address is the private road. Well, the, the marina uses it now. I mean, we're we're one of the owners. We're of one the of the road. owners of the road. There's only one lot from Mashby Neck Road to our property, so you pass one empty lot between Mashby Neck Road and Frog Pond Close, right. and. Quite a few years ago, we were asked by a neighbor who's here to do our best to direct anyone leaving our property back onto Mashby Neck Road instead of up and around the balance of the private part of Frog Pond Close. We did that immediately. We put up a sign, no right turn out of the parking lot, which would be going into the private area. And we continue to ask people, monitor that, we really see very, very little of it, except for some people that live up that way. We don't, if there's some of it going on and we spot it, we ask them to please be courteous and don't do that. We've been doing that for years. So you're directing traffic? Directing traffic across one vacant lot on the private road, which we're one of the owners of, over to Mashby Neck Road. That's so you're not been. directing them up? No, never have. On close. Never have. So if they're doing it, they're doing it on their own. They're doing they it on their own, and if we find them doing it, we ask them not to do it. Right. And you really have no right to tell them what to do. We do the best we can. We neighbors, there were a lot of comments about that we've never been interactive with the neighborhood. I don't think that that's a really, that's a fair comment at all. You know, I've been there. I, I don't want to get into all that, but we, we've been a good neighbor and doing our best. I was there since 1985 using the marina personally and then owning it since 2001, 22 years. <clears throat> and it's always been, I'm one of the neighbors. I, I live in town. <laughs> Please. We own the property. Let's be courteous. That makes us a neighbor. We own the property. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Board, I don't mean to get defensive, but it, it's... Well, we, do, we don't need this discussion. I, know, I, I apologize. I apologize. <clears throat> I don't want this to get out of hand. I think one, one point of clarification. You're not increasing any number of boats in the slips. No, we're not. Is that correct? It's 154. It stays at 154. Right. Yep. So there's no additional boat traffic. No. 
strictly a parking lot. Right. And I think town planner made a good point of that. He said, you know, if you were expanding the number of slips, that's really where you'd, you'd be worried about increasing traffic. Exactly. No, that's not the case here. Uh, there was a question from the audience about the uh, how many owners are Mashpee residents. Well, you know, we don't have an exact number. I think Tim estimates that it is more than half of the of the slip owners or, or slip users are Mashpee residents. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm not sure that really matters. It doesn't, but somebody right. asked him. We're it's a asked. business. Right. You can't reflect. It's like who goes to the restaurant. I mean, right. right. But somebody yeah. asked him, we're, you know, want to be open. We have people from Katuit. You're on the line. Mr. Chairman, yeah. they also, somebody in the audience asked, what board members have any interest in this particular property? Does anybody here? I don't own a boat. I, I only I know about but it doesn't go to this marina. It's never been to this marina. I have nothing to do with any Never event. paid a dime to this gentleman for slips. Anybody Does anybody own else? a boat? Nope. Nope. Just take no offense, but I have no interest in boats. <laughs> Good move, actually. <laughs> I like, fr I like boat friends with boats. It's worth better than owning a boat. I don't want to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was the other question. Oh, uh, there was. I'll voluntarily bring something up. Someone brought up the name One Water. Um, I used to own Bosun's Marine. That's fairly well known. I volunteered that to the information before. I sold that business in 2018. And frankly, that freed up my time and capabilities to turn around and get going on, on the improvements that we're doing at the marina. There is no association of ownership in any way, shape, or form between the company that bought Bosun's Marine and the marina. I'm 100% owner with my wife. We are, have been, they were separately owned, separate businesses, they've always been separate businesses, a separate ownership. Um, my wife and I own it, and we hope that as we improve it and our boys grow up, that it stays in the family. I mean, that's the goal of still putting effort into this. Uh, Okay. point I am in my career. So it's pretty straightforward. Any final comments? I'm going to take a few 30-second comments from the board, and then I'm going to move into some letters that were written that people haven't spoke about. And then there's more to talk about. We've got a lot more to go. And this is a full agenda. Right. We've got two pages okay. of hearings. Right. I mean, it's already an hour and 15 minutes. Right. So, any final comment? I would just say that I do believe I there's some comment about you know the parking. I believe my car client has adequately demonstrated the need for this parking. You know, based on his experience with the with the marina and the back and forth of people going and the the nature of the use of the boats nowadays. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thirty seconds. Raise your hand. Come right up. Who's out there that would like to speak? Come up. Give me your name again, if you would. Make it very brief, if you would, 30 seconds. Okay. Make your point. Okay. Um, I think the comment that if you get 152 slips, this addition, these additional boats will not you know, increase traffic. Of course they won't. Because if, you, if you're storing an additional 32 boats on the land. No, that is true. What? Th no. There's already 152 slips as it is right now. No, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying on the, I'm, I'm saying on the new lot, there'll be an additional. He's, he's asking for an additional 32 boats. Right now, those 152. No, 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 no. no, no. no that is no. not correct. It's 154 correct. slips, I think. Is it not? And it's 154. Right. Yeah. And there's not one more slip allowed. Right. There's no more boats. There's no more boats. Bring more boats. The, it's only for parking for the existing slips. And it's, there's no storage in the summer at so, all. So what he's saying is he will not offer storage to anyone who does not have a slip. That is what Correct. I said. Okay. Correct. Right. Okay. And there's no storage during the summer. Winter storage. And there's no rack storage. There'll be well, no taking the out, storage. moving in. That was one of my big concerns. We answered that in, in the last year. Right off the bat, I was concerned about starting store boats, put them in, call up, hey, have my boat ready. I didn't want that. Right. That was addressed right from the start. Okay, but let me so, just let me just ask I'm with you on that. Okay, just 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 a clarification, maybe I don't understand. So the additional he, he said that he wants the ability in last meeting to store up to thirty two boats there, right? 
So during the winter, right now, you've got a certain amount of boats that are on the lower level. He's going to store an additional 32 up there, okay? So to me, that's basically an additional 32 boats that are going to be stored that are not there now. It's, yeah. I mean, what did you ask him? I mean, because he said in the meeting on June, on, 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 we, we did speak about this. Yeah, that, no, but he said in the meeting that he has tremendous demand for this, and he could use the space for storage. That's why I feel really it's a, it's a Trojan horse Thank to get you. the boats in there. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Come right up. Thirty seconds, if you would. Thank you. The part about uh, the language with the lower lot, um, I think if you say something like the lower lot, the 77 spots on the lower lot meet the town requirements for a minimum number of parking spaces, and that is designated for that, that lower lot. Thank you. Anybody else? Come right up. <clears throat> <laughs> Take your time. And your name and address for the record. Yeah. Ron Meyerowitz, Pirates Cove. It seems I'm like sorry, your last name was what? What? Last name was? Meyerowitz. M is in Mary. Got it. Okay. Thank you. It seems like the owner of the lot said it didn't affect his business one way or another if he doesn't get it. So why not just drop it? Leave it like the way it is. He doesn't need it. Well, and another exactly. thing. I, I, no conversation. Thank a, a, you. Another thing. Uh, so many boats, you couldn't put a kayak in here anymore. It's all full. And I'm wondering how we got it dredged when we can't get one teaspoon out of Pirate's Cove River, out of the Mashpee River. OK? Thank you, Ron. Come right up. <clears throat> and again, you are? I'm Mary Fox, 63 Frog Pond, close. Got it. Um, we've had issues with um, music playing all night from the Porta Johnny area, uh, which we've complained about. We've also had issue with the dumpster all the screen is taken down on Frog Pond Close, a great deal of it. It's never been replaced. So we can see right through there now. A dumpster at one point was parked right on their property, but abutting the road it was very much an eyesore and smelly. Uh, it's been, uh, was there for a good over, well over a month. And um, I had addressed this with Mr. Leadham, and it wasn't very pleasant. Um, I was just concerned because we live on the road. We did not want to look at a dumpster or smell it. So okay. those are health issues that I'm bringing to your attention, as well as um, the conservation issue. And I hope that screening goes up on Frog Pond Close at some point. It still hasn't, although he had told me it would. Thank you. Not one twig has been put in. Thank you. Anyone else? Would you make a motion to close the public Certainly. comment? I'd like to make a motion that we close public comment uh, on the modification of the special permit uh, for 21 Frog Pond Close and 352 Mastery Neck Road. Trustee um, Timothy Leland, lead him, trustee of Shoestring Bay Nominee Trust. Second. All right, Bill seconds. Charlie, how do you vote? I vote yes. Scott? Yes. Uh, Ron? Yes. Bill? Yes. I vote yes. Okay, the public comment section is closed. All right. We have got some letters to read. Okay. I think we have one from Chris Resmina, I believe it's pronounced. It's I don't know, I'll leave this one. After that, we have Louise McDivitt. All right, so this is from Chris, as I said, dated Monday, June 26th. That's to Mary Ann Romero. Greetings, Mary Ann. I'm ready to express my support of the proposed parking lot expansion at the Mashpee Neck Marina. 
is my understanding that the lot will allow for much needed additional parking along with more winter storage space. I live in Pirates Cove and have heard these are concerns related to the possibility of the gas tanks of the winterized boats exploding, to which I'd like to point out that many, many residents in the cove over winter at <coughs> at least one boat on their property, and in my 13 years here, I've yet to hear or witness about any boat fire caused by a tank malfunction. Owners utilizing private storage facilities must have their boats prepped for winterization to ensure the continued safe storage and operation of that vehicle. It seems to me that this extra attention would minimize any risk of explosion. Additionally, it seems ironic that the subject of the unsightliness caused by boat storage would be an issue as there are some properties in the cove that house one to three boats on site, some of which are derelict, most of which remain uncovered throughout the year. This combined with stagnant rainwater creates prime mosquito breeding grounds and poses a health hazard and a threat of triple E and West Nile virus. A, property, a properly stored boat reduces these issues, uh, as would a final tow to the boat graveyard for some of these boats. Lastly, a word with regret regard to increased traffic concerns. As we all know, Mashby <coughs> Neck Road empties, empties into the public boat launch, which results in an increase in foot and motor vehicle traffic this time of year. We can't ignore that. This makes for an unattractive and tricky exit from the cove. The parking lot expansion will not add to this traffic uh, situation as the boats and their owners will be housed off street. We all need to remember that this is a recreational area that is appreciated and utilized by the local residents. We should be grateful for our quintessential Cape Cod location with its beautiful water views, marina included, and our ability to use and enjoy the national resources around us. Respectfully submitted, Chris Resmini, 28 Musket Lane. <clears throat> Do you have Louise McDevitt's, by chance, Jolly? Hi, Mary Ann. I would like to add the following items that we discussed and that were added to the plan review regarding 21 Frog Pond Close and 352 Mashby Neck Road. Noise, no functions, weddings, parties, group activities will be held on this property. Light, low lighting in the parking lot will be initiated. The floodlights originating from the dock area should be evaluated. My other concern is accountability. If any of the conditions listed in the permit are breached, what will be the process for corrective action? Thank you, Louise McDivitt, uh, 3 Treasure Lane, Mashby. Okay, the next one is John. I believe it's Kilty or something like that. I, sorry, I butchered the name. Okay, and this one is to Evan Lira, dated June 13th. Mr. Lira. I'm writing in opposition to the plan to convert the residential property at 352 Mashby Neck Road into a commercial industrial parking lot and boat storage area as proposed by the current owner, Timothy Lee. We would like to officially state our opposition to the proposed intentions for the following reasons. This is a residential home and should remain that way. Allowing this request would set a very dangerous precedent within this neighborhood and across Mashby proper. The number of parking spots allowed should be commensurate <clears throat> with what is allowed 
for this size residential home at 352 Mashpee Neck Road. This proposal clarify, uh, clearly benefits the owner of the marina and their paying customers while ignoring the permanent residents of the neighborhood. Uh, I invested in beauty, quiet, and safe neighborhood as a place to raise our family and ultimately enjoy retirement. The expansion of the boat marina and now proposed uh, boat marina parking lot and boat storage benefits the boat marina financially at the expense of the neighborhood uh, it is doing business in. As stated previously, we are opposed to this proposal and request that the residential property it's cut off. Oh, remain a residential property with no parking lot and no additional lighting. Thank you for considering our objection to the proposed intention. John, I believe again, it's guilty, I'm not sure, 103, Captain's Row. I have one more here, John, um, from Ariel Stowell. <clears throat> 93 Captain's Row, uh, Mashby. Uh, dear Mr. Lyra and department heads, I am writing to express my opposition as a nearby homeowner to the proposed conversion of the residential property at 352 Mashby Neck Road into a commercial property containing a parking lot and boat storage. I am against this development proposed by Timothy W. Leadham, the current owner based on the permanent negative environment effects it will cause. Mashby Neck is largely residential and includes a carefully protected river, woodland, forest, in a delicate waterfront environment. This development, if allowed to move forward, will be devastating to the environment and its residents. This area, while already struggling with annual uh, algal blooms, will be further taxed with exponentially more toxic petroleum runoff, as well as demands on the septic system, noise, and light pollution, and increased dangerous traffic. Furthermore, a large commercial parking lot with off-season boat storage in a quiet residential neighborhood is an absolute eyesore and a permanent one at that. The neighborhood will never be the same. For these reasons, Mr. Leadham's proposal will hurt the property values of all surrounding homes. On a personal note, <clears throat> I have been planning for my retirement at my home here in Mashby Neck, and that would naturally include further investments in this neighborhood and the town of Mashby. However, decisions such as allowing the expansion of the boat marina and now the proposed boat marina parking lot and boat storage do not seem to consider the effects on residents like myself and will serve to drive people away. Likewise, this decision will make me seriously reconsider a permanent move to Mashby. It is clear that the only beneficiary of this development, if approved, is Mr. Leadham. I am opposed to this proposal and request that the residential property remain just that, with no parking lot and no additional lighting, Thank you for your time and for considering my objection to the proposed development at 352 Mashby Neck Road, Mashby, Ariel Stowell, 93 Captain's Row. Okay, I have one here from Angela. I believe it's Patsios. Okay, it is dated June 27th. It's an email to Marianne Romero. Mashby Neck Marina Parking. Good afternoon, Marianne. I'm sending this letter and one of the supporters of the parking proposed by Mashby Neck Arena. I've been a resident of Pirate Coast for over 30 years and also a guest at the marina. The plans proposed by Tim and team are sound and actually a welcome change. It will assist all those folks that transport guests back and forth the marina and will cut down trips significantly I'm not sure why folks think that this is an issue any more than parking on the side of the road, which, by the way, is not really a parking area, but created for this activity only. And also, most folks keep their boats in their driveways uh, for the winter in the cove. Again, having lived here over 30 years, a thoughtful plan has been laid out and should strongly be considered for the majority and not denied for the few 
who really do not have a great reason to, it says to bat, I guess, debate it. Thank you for your time and consideration. <clears throat> There's no address on this. Okay, do you have one from Ray, maybe, or Angela Pina? Anybody? Hey, Angela, I don't. That was in my packet from last week, I believe. I didn't have it in my packet. I, one from, I get the Ray one here. Would you, would you read Ray? Uh, Ray Teachall, 41 Buccaneer Way, Mashpee, Mass., June 1st, 2023, Mashpee's only Board of Appeals. Uh, I'm a resident of Pirates Cove and have been in conversation with several neighbors in the Mashpee Neck Marina management regarding Mashpee Neck Marina's request to allow parking at 352 Mashpee Neck Road. Given that I am a, both a patron of the marina and a resident of Pirate Cove, Pirates Cove, I want to pass along my thoughts for your consideration while deciding on the marina's request. As I understand the situation, there are two primary concerns from the Pir Pirates Cove community. One, an increase in traffic at Mashpee Neck Road should a new entrance to the marina be created at 352 Mashpee Neck Road. And two, a parking lot would be aesthetically detract from the neighborhood. With respect to the <coughs> parking entrance at 352 Mashpee Neck Road, I will agree with the community members that this would create an adverse change in the traffic patterns. In discussion with the marina management, they indicated that although the original plan was to use the Mashpee Neck Road entrance, they have adjusted their plans to the current marina entrance to access the new parking area. The change in the plan would certainly remedy the traffic concerns as a pattern that would remain exactly as it is today. If the 352 Mashpee Neck Road property entrance is limited to parking for just the marina's marina manager, it will remain the same as when the property was a residence. I would also note it's only during peak periods, three or four times per year, that parking is a concern at the marina. With respect to the aesthetic concerns, if you take a drive through Pirates Cove, you'll see that we are a community that, allow, that freely allows the storage of boats, RVs, trailers, and the like at our residences. If the marina is to create additional parking and provide stockade fence or similar to hide the parking lot, it will clearly conform to the standard of the neighborhood. Therefore, the aesthetic concern is unfounded. Living in Cape Cod is synonymous with being on the water and boating is an integral part of the experience. The marina is being flexible to meet the needs of the community. I would submit the change they have proposed, keeping with the current entrance in the marina, should enable all parties to agree with the plan. Sincerely, Ray T. Charles. P.S. I understand there's a public meeting planned for June 6th. I'm sending this letter in lieu of attendance as it conflicts with my work schedule. Please include this as part of your meeting record. Okay, I have one here from Angela Pina. Yep. Does not have an, no, it does have an address. Okay, it's May 23rd, 1 30 p.m. Mary Ann, <clears throat> thank you for sending the attached documents. My property is at 315 Frog Pond Close. I completely agree with the Hennessy's on the traffic situation. However, they neglected to mention the trash left behind for residents to pick up, not to mention those that see fit to urinate along the side of the road. Unfortunately, they, if they approve this and allow for right turns out of the marina, the town would be thumbing their, its nose at all those property owners not only in Pirates Cove, but those on Frog Pond Close, Jack Bond Road, named for the Jackson <clears throat> and Bonito family that my dad gave land to back in the 50s and 60s. Quaker Run Road, Simons Narrow, all roads named by my father, some paved by my father. When he owned almost the whole right side of Mashpee Neck Road, to Pompanesset Bay and Shoestring Bay. My mom and dad cleared Mashby Neck Road with their red tractor and fought hard to keep the peace and tranquility of the area to the point of donating several <clears throat> acres into the conservation of Mashby. It makes me sick to my stomach that I think that the town would allow the property at 352 Mashby Neck Road to be commercialized. This is just what Liam is doing, no matter how he and the attorneys word it. I know that I hoped, as I'm sure all your residents up and down the road, that would be adversely affected, that no other commercial parcel would be allowed, and that the marina was only grandfathered commercial property allowed on Mashpee Neck Road. 
my property is on top of 352 Mashpee Neck Road, given to me by my mother, so I could build my little piece of tranquility and have my own patch to exhale on. And now there is this chance that I will gaze upon a parking lot. Again, Angela Pina. Okay, I think we have one from Matt and Jean Kilty, maybe related to John, do you have? Somebody have that? This is Matt and Jean. Okay. Uh, let's see. Dated Tuesday, June 13. From Matt and Jen, excuse me, not Jen. Dear Mr. Lira and department heads, and this was to Evan Lira and to Mary Amber Mill. Regarding 352 Mashby Neck Road, opposition to proposed plan. I'm writing in opposition to the plan to convert the residential property at 352 Mashpee Neck Road into a commercial slash industrial parking lot and both storage area as proposed by the current owner, Timothy W. Leo. We would like to officially state our opposition to the proposed intentions for the reasons stated below. 352 Mashpee Neck Road is a residential home and should remain that way. Allowing this request would set a very dangerous precedent. The adjacent wooded property uh, would likely be the next special request to become a further expansion of the marina parking and boat storage, further compounding the problem of negative impacts on the residential neighborhood and the surrounding fragile environment. Mounted parking spots allowed should be commensurate with what is allowed for this size residential home at 352 Mashby Neck Road. At this proposal, were allowed to go forward and residential home was converted to 30 parking spot lot and boat storage, it would have significant adverse effect on the current residential neighborhood and its residents, including compounding the existing noise pollution and light pollution, increased runoff of gas and oil from the boats and trucks into the bay, increasing traffic and congestion on Mashby Neck Road, increasing demand on the septic system and decreasing surrounding property values. This proposal would benefit the owner of the marina and their paying friends while the residents of the community and the community itself would be left to live with the negative impacts 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. The paying customers of the marina who were asked to write letters in support of the parking lot clearly have a vested interest in the convenience of the parking lot, but not our quiet, family-friendly residential neighborhood. We, like many of our neighbors, invest in this beautiful, quiet, and safe neighborhood as a place to raise our families and ultimately enjoy retirement. The expansion of the boat marina and now proposed boat marina parking lot and boat storage benefits the boat marina financially at the expense of the neighborhood uh, it is doing business in. As stated previously, we're opposed to this proposal and request that the residential property remain a residential property with no parking lot and no additional life. Uh, thank you for your consideration uh, uh, considering our objection to the proposed intention. Jennifer and Matthew, I believe again, it's guilty, I'm not sure. 30 captains roll. That is it for letters. Yep. Okay. So.
When are you going to do this? Not before or after? Okay. All right. Any final comments? Anybody on the board? Questions, concerns? Okay. Okay, this is an application <coughs> to modify the existing special permit. Right here in writing, right out of the book, page 20, talks about special permits. So this is what the board has to consider when they vote tonight. And it's going to take a second, but I'm going to read it because it's important. A special permit may be issued only following the procedures specified by the general laws and may be approved only if it is determined that the proposed use or development is consistent with applicable state and town regulations, statutes, bylaws, and plans. <coughs> and the important part, will not adversely affect public health or safety will not cause excessive demand on community facilities, will not significantly decrease surface or groundwater quality or air quality, will not have a significant adverse impact on wildlife habitat, estuarine systems, traffic flow, traffic safety, waterways, fisheries, public lands, and neighboring properties will not cause excessive levels of noise, vibration, electrical disturbances, radioactivity, or glare, will not destroy or disrupt any species listed as rare, endangered, or threatened by the Massachusetts Natural Heritage Program or any known historic or archaeological site will not produce amounts of traf, trash, refuse, or debris in excess of the town's landfill and waste disposal capacities. Will properly dispose of stumps, construction debris, hazardous materials, and other waste will provide adequate off-street parking, will not cause excessive erosion or cause increased runoff into neighboring properties or into any natural river, stream, pond, or water body and will not otherwise be detrimental to the town or the area. This is what we've got to consider tonight. Wait, ask a question. Go ahead. That, what you just read in, is for the issuance of a special permit. Correct. We are ruling on the modification of a special permit that was already granted under considering all of those regulations. Stuff we still have to keep. We still have to consider <clears throat> those in modifying the existing special permit. I agree. So when you vote, Consider this. All the stuff I just talked about. That's what's important. That's what the bylaw says. And we have to follow the get it. Any final comments? I do have one question. Oh, hold on one sec. I, I, I have Charlie. one. Under the uh, conditions for the for the uh, modification, under number six. It indicates condition that vehicles are to exit and enter only from the driveway of 21 Frog Pond Close. Remove the restriction sign, no right turn. Am, am I correct? Is that is not what we intend to do? No. We, we, because I don't we, think we are allowed to tell anybody where they can drive. No, no. Okay, but it's one of the conditions. But in effect, what that's doing is if that sign is removed, 
people would go in Frog Pond Close rather than out to Mashpee Neck Road. Can we condition it that it stays? So just oh, can we not condition it? If the sign stays, you have to take a left. Yeah. The sign is up to the owner. Leave the owner sure you can put the sign away. You don't have a problem with that? What should the condition read then? But the sign remains. Remain so there. remove, to, to just remove from the, from the condition, remove the exist, restriction sign, no right to Just take that out, strike. Yep. Sure. Right. And the, and the balance remains. Am I correct? That's correct. Yep. Perfect. I have a question over it. Uh, read, read that again, would you? What's it going to say? Condition that vehicles are to exit and enter only from the driveway of 21 Frog Pond Close. Which they already yeah, period. And agreed to. Period. Right. And the sign is there at the option of the owner, and he's indicated he's going to keep it there. Or should okay. it say that you have to remain taking a left as you exit the parking lot? You can't just say it goes on the frog pond close because it can go either way. Right. It should maintain a left turn. I don't know if we can condition that or not. But if it's saying to remove the sign, I think that's a problem. Yeah, we don't want the sign's got to stay. Keep the sign. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to just remove yeah. If the sign exists, which I believe it does, so we're not right. asking to remove it. So it'll nope. remain. Okay, but I thought you said something that you I mean, exit on yeah, the front Yeah, it's, it's not a one-way, am I correct? It's condition no. the vehicles are to exit and enter only from the driveway of 21 Frog Pond Close. Period. Yeah, I, I don't know how we could possibly tell somebody they had to go one way or the other. No, we, so the sign was something that Mr. Leadham did on his own? It wasn't required to I, do? I have no idea. That's, that's my question. If it wasn't required, then he's being a good neighbor. It, well, okay. Doing that. Maybe it's a suggestion, but... I don't think we can police that. You can't enforce it. Yeah. Okay. No. It's a suggestion, right? Yep. We're not, we're not doing anything. The sign is but up. But I agree screen. we don't have we strike right. it that it doesn't, we don't remove the sign. If there's a sign there. Who is the, Chris, who is the owner of record? Is it Shoestring Bay Nominee Trust 2? It is now, both properties are now owned by 21 Frog Pond Close LLC. Okay, so I guess it doesn't matter the O&M refers to it, because it doesn't matter. As long as it goes on record, it, it is indexed correctly, right? Correct. Okay. Good. <coughs> so who's the owner of so, so who's the special permit under right now, today? It was one of the prior, end, the, it was under a trust. The original special permit was under the trust, the Shoestring Bay Nominee Trust One, I believe. But now both properties are owned by Frog, 21 Frog Pond Close LLC. So the special permit falls with the land, not the owner, correct? Yes, that's correct. So then, who is the modification going to? Who are you going to put this on record? 21 Frog Pond Close LLC. So not Shoestring Bay Nominee Trust? Well, the motion was going to be made in reference to Shoestring Bay Nominee Trust. Well, I've got to change it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. 21 for all properties at one. LLC. So if I were asked a motion, say the owner again, please. 21 Frog Pond Close LLC. Wow. Oh, my God. You know, 21 Frog Pond Close LLC. So right. he's not a trustee, he's a manager. E. <laughs> this is great. Oh my God. Is he the only manager? Can I make yes. a suggestion that we, we, if you make a motion, that you're going to make a motion to uh, approve a modification to an existing special permit? which was previously issued to. Yeah, well, so I was going to refer to a special permits. And then, but this is for 21. I think we'll be, I think we'll be. Please go ahead. Yikes. I trust you. I don't okay, know what you should. Any final comments before Ron makes a motion? Ron, would you make a motion, please? Oh, I'd, I'd love to make a motion. And I would, I would entice any member of this board to chime in if, in fact, I make a mistake, please. I would like to make a motion that we issue to Timothy W. Leadham, manager of 21 Frog Pond Close LLC, 
uh, at 21 Frog Pond Close and 3352 Mashpee Neck Road a modification of an existing special permit for the use of a permit of a marina and to expand to include an adjacent prop adjacent property located at 352 Mashpee Neck Road. The original special permits were issued under the following I guess the, 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 the entity. entities and they are as follows SP-83-3-008 and SP-00-167 and SP-02-59 and SP-20-06 they were issued under section 17424C9B and 17425E and 17417 of the zoning bylaws. This is on property located in R3 zoning district, map 90, parcel 83, and map 90, parcel 97, Mastery Mass. It was continued from May 24, 2023, hearings at the request of the attorney. Is that, am I okay yeah, so I far? You're right on. Great. Right Number on. one, the conditions of this motion are as follows. Number one, Condition on the recommendations submitted by the town planner in a memo dated June 5th, 2023 to the ZBA secretary as part of this decision. Two, condition upon the engineering review report provided by Pesci Engineering dated June 13th, 2023 and June 26th, 2023 as part of this decision. Three, prior to the request of, the, of a building permit, the applicant shall issue a working capital account in the amount of $5,000. The check will be issued to the town of Mashpee to be utilized to pay for the initial peer review and for future peer review inspections and sign-offs if required. Number four, this is a condition all town department comments right on the record and all public comments right on the record. Also condition on the recommendations submitted by the plan review committee dated Tuesday, June 6, 2023 <coughs> as follows. The office is in allowed use as an accessory to Mashpee Neck Marina. I'm going, to, I'm going to enumerate them and I will number them even though they're not numbered here. So number two, condition that the gate access and stockade fence be widened to accommodate for the fire department recommendations. Number three, conservation department recommendations will be up to the conservation commission. They are scheduled, I'll leave that off. Number four, Board of Health recommending <coughs> septic system upgrade to an IA system to accommodate the office space at three bedroom house. The residential dwelling is only for office use, employee use, and the three-bedroom house. The residential house to be restricted to the dwelling with no future conversions of a restaurant, portable restroom to be used by boaters of the marina. Number five, DPW director requires a curb cut permit for emergency access purposes. Number six, no boat rack storage allowed. Number seven, no special events allowed on the property, i.e. weddings, private functions. Number five in reference to the total comments. No boat storage between June 1st through and inclusive of September 1st. Number six, condition that vehicles are to exit and enter only from the driveway of 21 Frog Pond Close. <coughs> Number seven, condition that the lighting on the property be night sky lighting and to satisfy peer review comment by Mr. Pecci, June 26th, 23. Number eight, condition that there be no construction on the property during the hours of 5 p.m. and 8 a.m. No construction work on Sundays. Number nine, condition that moving of boats and or heavy vehicles be restricted to the hours between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. on 352 Mashby Neck Road. Number 10, condition that there is no boat, vehicle or trailer, me trailer mechanical repairs service done on 352 Mashby Neck Road. Number 11, condition that the screening between the two lots be Eastern Red Cedar rather than Arbor Vitae. Number 12, parking is restricted to customer parking and office use only. Number 13, the Zoning Board of Appeals finds the residential use of the property is incidental to the marina only. Number 14, the short term rental, no short term rental of the property. Number 15, Site plan prepared for Shoestring Bay Nominee Trust 2, Timothy W. Leadham, trustee. Project 352 Mashby Neck Road and 21 Frog Pond Close, Mashby Mass. Drawn title. 
site aerial exhibit plan date May 23rd, 2023, page one of three, revised day, revision day, 5223, add our providing screening, red eastern cedar, 6223, revised access location, prepared by Cape and Islands Engineering, drawing title, site improvement plan, page three of three, revision dates, 5223, add our revising screening, 6223, revised access location, 6923, revised drainage and fence gate size, 61423, revised Revisions per peer review, 627-23 issued for permit. Number 13, condition that any modifications to the plan will require the applicant to, to return to this board. Also, I want to make specific reference to the comments that was made by the applicant that any conditions that would add an additional sheet to these sheets would could require um, additional um, o oversight by this board it may need and will require this board to review those, any and all those changes. Number 17, access to the additional overflow parking shall be from 21 Frog Pond closed only, except emergency access through gate, and the access to the residence shall remain from 352 Mastery Neck Road. 18, the residence may only be used by the owner of the marina and family or an employee of the marina and family. 18B, Condition that the deed be recorded to Barnstable County Registry of Deeds as a deed restriction limiting the use of this home as an accessory use to the marina for owner or an employee. 19. A portion of the residence may be renovated for office use that is only to be used as accessory and incidental to the marina. 20. The residence cannot be used as an accessory, clubhouse, restaurant, snack bar, or wet bar, nor shall be pre-existing or newly constructed accessory structure on the subject property be utilized for the aforementioned uses. 21, the number of boats to be stored on 352 Mashby Neck Road cannot exceed the number of parking spaces approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals. 32, 22, the special permit is conditioned upon approval by the Conservation Commission. 23, Applicant to install an AI septic system and tank, which shall be rated H20. 24. No boat storage allowed on 352 Mastery Neck Road from June 1st to September 1st. 25. Boats shall be trailered, moved, repositioned, etc., on 352 Mastery Neck Road during the hours of 8 a.m. to 5:30 p.m. Shall only be trailered, moved. Number 26, only boats owned by existing slip customers may be stored on 352 Mastery Neck Road. 27, the mechanical work to boats on three, no mechanical work to boats on 352 Mastery Neck Road. 28, if the owner or future owner of 352 Mastery Neck Road seeks to return the property to a residential only said, residence only, said owner may request a zoning board release the conditions as to the limitations placed on the use of the residence and such conditions shall be released on the stipulation that the lot be placed in separate ownership from 21 Frog Pond Close and the parking area be removed and returned to its pre-existing lot con condition and any deed restriction requirement shall mirror this. 29, the O and M operation but the operation and maintenance plan as submitted to this board shall be modified said modification will be as such and shall be submitted to um, this board prior to the application for a building permit and and included into its record the first page uh, actually page two at the top shall read as follows a, property operating, a properly operating drainage system is a basis for long life of the roads and parking areas and for the protection of wetland resources against pollutants carried by stormwater. If the drainage system fails to work, frequent pooling of stormwater would be expected to occur on site, possibly affecting the use and, effect and activities of the property. An engineer qualify or an, a, a qualified individual shall be responsible for the maintenance and operation of the drainage system. Okay. Number 30. The recording of the amended O&M and special, modified special permit shall be required and proof thereof shall be submitted to this board prior to the issuance or the request of a building permit. Number 31, there should be no more slips created than exist today and that number is 154.
Number 32, help. <laughs> the, the lot that is the new lot being created is for overflow parking only and shall only be filled upon the lower lot. Only be, only be used. Only be utilized when the lower lot is completely full. Is completely full, and said full would be 77 cars. Could have been said a million different ways, but that's fine. That's my motion. That is the longest motion. I know. Just think of it, Ben. I need a glass of water. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll second it. Bill seconds. Bill, how do you vote? I vote yes. Charlie. Yes. Scott. Yes. Ron. Yes. Mm. I vote yes. Good project. <coughs> A lot of conditions. Only I've 30. never seen so many. Only 34. It's the longest motion I've read, and I've been reading motions for, I think, 10 years, haven't I? Yep. But hopefully we covered everything that we should have covered. And I hope we protected the neighborhood. Try to make everybody happy. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of boards and committees in this town, town hall, read through this of, thing with a fine tooth comb. A lot of, bunch of effort. Huge effort. Every single department. Thank you. Go to the men's room if that's okay. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. Take a short break. Yeah, there you go. I am too. <coughs> wow, possible. Wow. Right. John, uh, I'm going to recuse myself.
come around here. It was, so. oh, it's right here. Oh, okay. okay. I used to make conservation three conservation. 33 conservation. And they were long. I know. I was going to be sure you check the right box. Yeah. Okay, there you go. That was a long one. All right. I say we continue so everything. The longest oh. single hearing. No? <laughs> okay. Uh, Brad, you're going to sit on this one. Uh, Charlie, would you read the next new hearing? First new hearing, I should say. <clears throat> Under new hearings, the first new hearing is for Mute Swan Circle. Owners Patricia Donnelly and Roger Schiffman request a variance under section 174-33 of the zoning bylaws set back from wetlands to allow for construction of an access stairway to the dock on property located in an R3 zoning district, map 84, parcel 38-0, Mashby, Mass. Hi. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Kevin Clower. I'm an attorney with Ahmed Clower Law Firm here uh, in Falmouth. Uh, I'm used to saying here in Falmouth, but uh, not, not, in, not here in Falmouth, not here in Mashpee. Uh, I am here tonight representing Roger Schiffman and Patricia Donnelly, uh, the owners of Four Mute Swan Circle. Uh, I'm hoping this is slightly less controversial than the last hearing, uh, and hopefully a little bit faster. Uh, I'm joined also by Mark Dibb from Cape and Islands Engineering. He's here if there's any questions that need uh, his clarification. The applicants are requesting a variance uh, from provision 174.33 in order to allow a structure closer than 50 feet to the water. Specifically, they're seeking uh, an access stairway to the dock, which is approximately 16 feet from mean high water. This property, Four Mute Swan Circle, is um, just shy of an acre. It's 41,490 square feet. It's on the western side of Shoestring Bay. Uh, the owners obtained approvals and permits to construct the home and to develop the property back in 2020. Uh, for a variety of reasons, they're in the, the finishing that process now. So the dock and the stairs uh, are fully permitted with both the State and Conservation Commission. A Chapter 91 license is issued and order of conditions was issued and recorded. Uh, however, a variance is needed in order to allow the stairway, which would be within that 50-foot setback. Having the stairway there improves the property and actually serves to protect the resource areas more than not having it does. Uh, having the stairs is better than having someone tramp over the coastal bank. The allowance of this variance would not be a detriment to the site of the neighborhood and would not be in derogation of the intent of the bylaw. Uh, that's effectively it. Uh, I'd, I'd be happy to address any questions that the board has. Okay, I'm going to make one move right here. Um, Bill has stepped down, so it's going to be sitting on this will be Bob and Brad and us three. Just for the record. Okay. Um, any questions you guys have? I, I don't have a site plan. Uh, I have an extra cover. Oh, sure. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. indeed. Well, I have that. Here you go. I have a small. Oh, you have the cover. Oh, okay, that's good. Sorry. Pretty straightforward. I just got the. Um, Thank you. Straightforward. <clears throat> After your mountain goat to get to his dock, or he's going to have to get a variance. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah, what's the, uh, it goes from what to what? It's like 16 feet of vertical yeah. rise, I think you can mention that. It's a steep slope. And again, it's one of them, uh, the dogs are, are allowed, they're already proved this is, a, um, um, Microphone, please. I'm very familiar with this project. Uh, um, again, it's, it, it's one of them, where uh, it's uh, to, uh, topography dictates the variance, uh, and uh, because it would be uh, if it was flat ground, it would it wouldn't they wouldn't have any for stairs. So very very uh, approvable by the board. Yeah, it's also um, it's an odd shaped lot. It's got a circle in it, so to speak, cut out long and thin, and. Um, sloped dramatically uh, so yeah, I've got no issues I just want to add it, would, it does require a building, a building permit Brad any thoughts on this any, any thoughts on this one no Bob no. Okay. 
Ron, would you like to make a motion on this? Um, we want to close public hearing for public comments. Uh, yeah, good. Thank you. Any public comments on this? Linbar Reserve Drive. I just have a question of what would be the mitigation after this stairway was built because there would certainly be disruption in the wetland area in the building of it and what would be their conditions for mitigating any of that and in fact hopefully improving it. Thank you. Very good question and we should have read these comments in from the boards. Do we have them? Um, I have them right here. Conservation. Well, Thank you for bringing that up. Conservation Commission approved access stairs to be built among other projects on the property lot. Right. So, so the mitigation else? would have been outlined by conservation when they went to conservation, so you'd have to check with conservation as to what their mitigation was on the site. There would have been a what? Order of conditions? Order of conditions. So the applicant, you may, do you have the mitigation plan? So this was permitted in 2020 uh, as part of the overall development of the project. So all the it, there's no mitigation specific to I the see. stairway. But maybe you could show the mitigation on the lot or something. Uh, maybe just point it out. She just has a question, and I'm trying to help her with it. No, completely understood. I think uh, you know I don't think that we've outlined the landscaping on this plan specifically. So have you been to conservation with this specific? This this, was, this is the plan that was approved by conservation. In, in back, yes. way back when? Yes. Really? Yes. And so these or, and your order conditions have been extended? If it, Mark, you know if it's been we extended? We only usually get two. So when was this approved? So the, they might have approved it as an RDA for the extension of the order yeah, But even RDA has, has time limit. Sure, but no, but the order of conditions was, was actually approved and recorded in 2020 to the extent that this required any additional permitting through CONCOM that have to go through that process. Uh, no, but so you'd have, so usually your order conditions only last for three years, so you could have been up and you'd have to actually. So they have, they have, have a conservation comments right here. Yeah. Why don't we just read them in? I just read it. That's what I just read. Yeah. It, it's, That's all they said. It so just says right, well, it was approved with everything else. It's an ongoing project. Yeah. Okay, well, you know what's none of my business. So the bottom line, so I'm just trying to answer this question. I, right. They haven't finished it? the initial construction still. Yeah. And the Board of Health comment was no comments. Okay. Understood. I mean, to your conservation. It's not. Yeah, it's out of our cool. jurisdiction. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, anybody? Okay. Close it. Yeah, let's close the public comment. I'd like to make a motion that we close public comment in reference to Patricia Donnelly and Robert Schiffman uh, in reference to their variance uh, under 17433 at 4 Mute Swan Circle. Do we have a second? Second. Bob seconds. Bob, how do you vote? Yes. And Brad? Yes. And Scott? Yes. <clears throat> yes. And I vote yes. Okay, the public comment is closed on this. Okay, why don't we make a motion on this? Yep. I'd like to make a motion that we issue a special I'm not, variance under Section 17433 to Patricia Donnelly and Roger Schiffman of Four Mute Swan Circle. Said variance is under Section 17433 of the Zoning Bylaw, specifically the setback from wetlands, to allow for construction of an access stairway to the dock on property <coughs> located in R3 Zoning District, Map 84, Parcel 38-0, Mastery Mass, with the following conditions. One. Board of Chairman, the applicant meets all the conditions of a variance under Mass General Law 48, Section 10. Two, site plan and peer design plan prepared for Patricia Donnelly and Roger Schiffman, Project 4, Mute, Swan Circle, Mashy Mass, Shoot Number 1 of 1, date October 10, 2019, <coughs> prepared by Cape and Island Engineering, drawn by JVBRLR, checked by MC, stamped and signed by Matthew C. Costa, professional land surveyor number 52282, and Paul Lazardi Rivera, professional civil engineer number 46845. Three condition on all town department comments read into the record. Four condition on any changes to the plan require the applicant to return to this board. 
Number five, condition that the applicant is aware that he needs to obtain a building permit prior to construction. Okay, we have a second. Second. Okay, Bob seconds. Bob, how do you vote? Yes. And Brad? Yes. Scott? Yes. Ron? Yes. I vote yes. Good luck. Thank you all very much for your time. It's greatly appreciated. Yep. Thanks for your patience. Charlie, would you read the next new oh. hearing? Um, um, 25 Pembroke, Pembroke Drive is rescheduled for July 12, 2023. The next on our, our list is 17 Bowsbrook Point. Owners J.C. and Christy M. Willardson request a written binding under Section 174.17 and 174.33 of the Zoning Bylaws to allow for a deck addition, alterations, extensions, to a pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling on property located in the R3 Zoning District Map uh, 105, Parcel 228, Nashville Mass. Bob, you're going to sit on this. Yep. And is Scott out? Scott yeah, Scott's out. out. Yep. All right. So how about and Bob and Charlie? So three plus two. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Attorney Christopher Corain, representing Jay and Christy Willitson. They are the owners of 17 Bowsprick Point. They are seeking a written finding under 174-17 uh, to make alterations to a pre-existing uh, non-conforming single-family residence. Um, this is a lot that is located in the R3 zoning district, and it has several existing non-conformities. The done. front yard setback is non-conforming as it is only 21.4 feet from the property line where it is, the requirement is 40 feet. The rear yard setback, I should note, this is in the Little Neck Bay. Oh no, I'm sorry, the next one is. This is, um, <laughs> I got confused. The rear yard setback is 15 feet. Um, we have 20 feet on this one, so that's a conforming condition. and. The side yard setback is 14.4. Uh, uh, the southerly side, so that's a non-conforming condition. Uh, so again, front yard setback is non-conforming. The southerly yard setback is non-conforming. The all but 300 feet of this, 300 square feet of this lot is in land subject to coastal storm flowage. So we have 100% lot coverage. So it's a 9,200 square foot lot, but only 300 feet is outside of the land subject to coastal storm flowage. So 100% lot coverage and setback to wetlands is zero since the, you know, 99% of the lot is within land subject to coastal storm float. I did my best because really what this project is about is a lot of small modifications to the house. So I don't know if you have my, my presentation, which I tried I to do a, a job of noting what exactly is going on on this proposal. So. Nice markup. Yeah, I thought it would be easier to do it this way. So the first part of this proposal is, which is circled as A. Circled as A. Just one second. 
hang on a second. No, no, okay. up. Sure. Who did they assign this to? You show. You have to show. Yeah. Oh, no, this presentation. Yeah, I have it. Okay. With all the no, you don't. You got all the pictures and everything. I do. Okay. Good. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no problem. So there, are, there are really five things that we're doing to this property. So, A is we're going to enclose that entryway and make it a little bit wider. B, if you notice, th there's a little window that kind of sticks out. So we're just boxing out that front of the house there, where it's circled B. Yeah. We are going to add a first floor deck where it's C. We are going to move the stairs on the westerly side, which is circle D, and move them to the easterly side. And then E, we're just simply ex extending the second floor living space over the proposed first floor deck. So those are the five things that we are doing. By doing this, we are not creating any new nonconformities, and we are not intensifying any of the nonconformities except for the lock coverage. Okay, so we're not, the front yard setback's not changing, the rear set yard setback's not changing, the side yard setbacks are not changing other than the northerly side is going to go to 17.7 feet, but it's still a conforming condition. Okay, so we are increasing the lock coverage under, if this lot was not, no land subject to coastal storm flowage, the lock coverage would be currently 17.8% and it'd be increased to 19.98%. It'd be under the 25% 20, that you allow for 10,000 square feet and right. less lots. So, and this lot is 9,200 square feet, but only 300 square feet under the minimum lot size of the bylaw. Got it. So in theory, in, in reality, you're going from 100 to 100, but right. under the old, yeah. Right. We're under we're under what would be you're under the 25 right what would be normally allowed by this board, so again we're not creating any new nonconformities we're not uh, exp intensifying any existing nonconformities other than the um, other than uh, the lot coverage and I'd also note if you look at this lot it's pretty unique it's you know bowsprit point comes down as a loop so it is a funk, you know it's a funky shaped lot it's obviously affected by by the wetland areas, but you know, these really are modest uh, modifications to this home and certainly consistent with some of the other houses that you see in that area. So, so it looks like your distance to the wetland is the same. That is correct. Uh, 20 plus or minus? Right. Is that, that what I'm seeing? That is correct. So, so I think it's Pompanesic Creek, but we're registering wetland. Right. So that's not changing, but, but because we're in land subject coastal storm flows, we're technically zero. Right, it's I got from zero to zero. <clears throat> right. Well, circle E, you're saying you're extending that? The yeah, the, the upstairs is going to be oh, not any further than where the first floor deck is. So you're yeah, we're extending out. So you are increasing some non conformity, did you say that? No. Only the lock coverage. Just Only the lock. Lock. But it's, okay. Yep. So there's no non conformity <coughs> expansion. There's no not new. There's no nonconformity that's being extended or intensified. Correct. And there's no new nonconformity. That is correct. When you say you're ex, ex, um, extending the nonconformity for lot coverage, it's only because you're a hundred now, and you're a hundred. Well, correct. Forward. That is correct. Well, you're also going from the old theory of 17 to 19 something. Right, but correct. that right. but still under. Right. Neither correct. one of them is uh, in excess. Right. Correct. Because it's 25. I'm just saying he's going a little, but he's still under. Right. Correct. What would be normally approved by the board? Yeah. Correct. So, those are the uh, those are the modifications. I'm happy to answer any questions. Good presentation. Thank you. Easy. I'm good. I'm good with this. Easy to see. Okay. Yeah, I thought yeah. trying to explain all, all these little things. Yeah. I think the circles helped yeah. a lot. Oh, you did, you did. <laughs> I Good see something in the plan I've never seen in a plan in my life. The area seaward of the lawn is infested with pragmites. What's that? Pragmites? I think yeah. that's like the salt, those big cattails that you see in the, never in the salt that. marsh. Yeah. I wonder why that made statement. I don't know. I, 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 Tom Bunker I like did the plan. He's not here. I would have to ask him why he noted yeah. that. <laughs> and I believe that this, pro this project has already been approved by conservation. Well, yeah, we're going to get to that. Alone. We'll get to it. <clears throat> and we have Board of Health and Conservation. 
Yep. So, uh, before we do that, do we have any public comments on this? Anybody? Okay, seeing none, Ron, would you make a motion on that? I'd like to make a motion that we uh, close the public comment section of this um, hearing. Hearing uh, for 70 Bowsbury Point owners J.C. and Christy M. Willardson. Uh, this is under section 174.17 and 174.33 of the zoning bylaws. Second. Second. Bob seconds. Bob, how do you yes. vote? Yes. Charlie? Yes. Ron? Yes. Bill? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. Uh, let's read in some <clears throat> comments here. <clears throat> I've got Charlie conservation Wilson. right here, John. Yeah. Uh, 25 tied run. Commission approved additions to dwelling. No, no, no. Both spread. Oh, I okay, got you. Wrong one. I'm sorry. Right above. Same thing. I did the same thing. I got you. <laughs> 17 Bowsprit Point. Commission approved addition to front of dwelling and rebuild of rear deck as well uh, invasive control and mitigation and resource area. And Board of Health. Board of Health, 17 Bowsprit. Uh, Board of Health, three bedroom house, no comment. So you're not expanding the bedrooms? No. Nope. Okay. Not that this really matters, but it's because I'm inquisitive. What's the invasive control? What are they doing? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Mark, do you know? know. <laughs> Grab the mic. I just want to preference this is not my project. This is Tom Bunker's project. Oh, but that, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can just. Um, it's probably referring to the Phragmites. They're an invasive species, and they're going to be managed as part of it. Or there could be other invasive. Did you dig them out? There's sure a they don't process. spray them or anything. Uh, I've done the process. It's a pain in the butt. Don't you like to Not Phragmites, but something else. Yeah, <laughs> you cut it off. And you cut off the top. But then you're going to go two growing seasons. It's a yeah. tough. Yeah. Yeah. But conservation would have come if they had a problem. Yeah. yeah. I didn't, I've never heard the Phragmites at all. Okay. So the comments are done. Mm -hmm. Any final questions? Okay. All right, Ron, would you make a motion, please? Uh, yes. Oh, we, I thought we did. He did. I, did we close I apologize. Uh, no, we closed the public. Yeah, you're right. right. Man, my mistake. I apologize. I know. Sorry. It's 8 30. I'm, I know. It's I'm there. Too. Um, did you ask me to make a motion? Yes. I'd like to make a motion that we issue a written finding to Christy M. Willitson and J.C., um, owners of 17 Bowsprit Point, under sections 174.17 and 174.33 of the zoning bylaw, to allow for deck to allow for deck additions, alterations, extensions to a pre-existing non-conforming <coughs> single-family dwelling, property located in R3 zoning district, map 105, parcel 228, mastery mass of the following conditions: one. The board has determined the applicant meets all the conditions of a written finding of the Mass General Laws 40A, Section 6. Two, plat, plot plan, proposed renovation, renovation 17, Bowsprit Point, mastery mass, prepared for Jay and Christy Willitson, scale one inches, 20 feet, date, May 4th, 2023, drawn by TJB, job number 21006, revisions, change lot coverage, 512.23, TB drawing number. B28-44, stamped and signed by Thomas Jackson Bunker, registered land surveyor number 32653. Three, house plans. Willitson Residence, 17 Bowsprit Point, Mastery Mass, prepared by Architect Associates, job number 2124, date May 12, 2023, scale is noted, drawn by ELC, issued for review, sheet number, sheet A2, first floor plan, A3, second floor plan, A4 elevations, number four. Condition in all town department comments read in the record. Number five, the board finds that the proposed project is not substantially more detrimental than the pre existing non conforming structure or use to the neighborhood. Six, condition that any changes to, plan, to the plan will require the applicant to return to this board. That's it. We have a second. Second. Bob seconds. Bob, how do you vote? Yes. Charlie? Yes. And Ron? Yes. Bill? Yes. And I vote yes. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Nice project. Thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Plans. 
Brad, you're going to sit on the next one. Is let's grab Scott. Oh, there he is. John, we'll get that back to you as soon as uh, Bobby comes back. Okay. All right, no reason to wait, Brad. You're on this one. Charlie, would you read the next yep. new hearing? <clears throat> next one, new hearings, 25 tied run. Uh, owners Patrick J. and Nissa R. Knight request a written finding under 174.17 and 174.33 of the zoning bylaws to allow for a garage addition, alterations, extensions to a pre-existing non-conforming single family dwelling on property located in the R3 zoning district and Little Neck Bay zoning district map 126, parcel 40, Mashby, Mass. Hi, good evening again, Mr. Chair, members of the board, attorney Christopher Corain representing Patrick and Nissa Knight. Uh, they are the owners of 25 Tide Run. They are here tonight as well as Mark Dibb from Cape and Islands, the engineer, and Greg Sherusen of Rescom, who is the architect on this project. Uh, as, as noted in the public hearing notice, we are applying under 174.17 for a alteration extension to an existing, uh, pre-existing non-conforming single family residence. So we're seeking a written finding. The property is located at 25 Tide Run. It is in the R3 zoning district. However, it is subject to the Little Neck Bay subdivision special permit. So the, the um, setbacks are a little bit different in, the, in Little Neck Bay. So uh, lot coverage is 30. Lot coverage is 30%. The front yard setbacks 30, per, 30 feet. The rear yard setbacks 20 feet as opposed to 50, 15. So there are a little slight differences. Um, that being said, the existing structure is completely conforming except as to setback to wetland and lot coverage. And that is because about a little over the, uh, this, is one of, this is a unique lot. It's not totally within land subject to coastal storm flowage. Only about a little over a third of it is in land subject to coastal storm flowage. So if you look at the total lot area of this lot, it's 15,060 square feet, which would meet the minimum lot size for the Little Neck Bay cluster. However, given the, the minimum lot size with land subject to coastal storm flowage, the lot size is only 6,325 square feet. So the existing lot coverage is 35%, given the fact that some of this lot is within, not all of it, but some of it is within land subject to coastal storm flowage. So you don't have a pre-existing non-conformity in lot coverage? No, I do, because 35%. That's over the 30 of Little Neck Bay. Okay. So I do have so a pre-existing. Pre yeah, so 30% is Little Neck Bay. I'm at 35% given the land subject to Cold Storm Flowage. What if would it be without? 14.6%. And the increase would be to 16.6%. So we'd be well on. So we're going from 35 to 40% given the land subject to Cold Storm Flowage. But if you didn't count that, it'd only be going from 14.6 to 6.6%. Otherwise, all the non-conform, there are no setback, no front yard, no side yard, no rear yard non-conformities. The new structure, the new building on top of the existing foundation will not create any new non-conformities, and we're not obviously intensifying any of the existing setbacks because they're all conforming. So what's happening with this project is the structure itself over the foundation is being taken down. It's a pretty dilapidated building, but the existing foundation is remaining. So that's why we're treating it as an alteration to a pre-existing non-conforming structure because the, the foundation is remaining. There will be some expansion of that footprint given that there will be a new two-car garage. Uh, there will be a, the entryway will be closed off and, ex and pushed forward a little bit. And there's a, a, um, a covered por porch to the, uh, to the right side of the project. 
Right now, there's a significant portion of deck which is in land subject to coastal storm flowage. All of that structure, the house, the decking, that's all being taken out of the land subject. So there will be no structure as far as deck or house within the flood zone. We're currently this deck now. There will be a patio, there will be a spa, splash pool type thing that will be in there. But as I say, as far as structure is concerned, everything's being pulled out of the land subject to coastal storm flow. So nothing in the flood zone. Um, so it, the other thing to note, we did get the um, uh, Board of Health comments recommending an IA system that's based on the new regulations that have come down. My client is agreeable to a condition from this board that an IA system be put in as approved by the Board of Health. So, I think that should be a condition. Yeah, and that's fine. My, my client is agreeable to that. So is this a pool going in? It's like, a, I don't know how you actually term it. Greg might be, it's, it's like a plunge pool. It's small. And is it in the land subject? That is in the land subject, place. yes. But it's ground level, so it wouldn't be, I don't think Dave, you consider that structure. What did conservation say? It's been approved by conservation. So they're fully aware of the plunge pool? Yes, that's right. Everything's been, yeah, everything's been approved by conservation. Does it get drained in the winter? Where does it get drained? No, I don't think it gets drained. But I don't know. We had this over in Pompanessa, similar situation a few years ago. Where there was a pool and there was a question about how you're going to drain it. Where's it going? You're going to put it in the creek? That type of thing. Right. It went on and on and on. Yeah. So I'm surprised that conservation didn't talk about it. Well, they may have. I mean, I wasn't at the conservation hearing, so there may be conditions in that permit that deal with draining of the pool. But I don't, I don't have the order, and I wasn't, I wasn't at the meeting. I think we just conditioned on whatever they did order. Right. Well, it's conditioned on town department comes in. Well, we've got a, we've got an order right here, a thing from them. Dave, do you know anything on this? Yeah. So it's approved. Well, um, generally, like, like. Um, this board usually just does dispersion on a, on a pool. Um, if it disperses, and we've already we know that there's not. So uh, generally, we don't have too many issues with um, the pool being in, <coughs> in a in a flood zone. This yeah, I understand this, that. I was just thinking yeah. about the drainage. Um, sure, this chemicals in the plunge pool. Yeah, I mean this this this. Um, Proposal did come to me uh, as a as a for for a permit application, which I had to deny because of of uh, setback to wetland. That's pretty much it. That's the only reason why it, it's even sent to the board. It's a it's um, a salt pool, so no chemicals. I mean, I didn't have any many, many I, any other issues, but the, the way we look at. The, I mean, the I personally have a salt pool. I don't drain it. I mean, we drain it down to. A lower level. Yeah, there's no need to. Do you remember what I'm talking about over in yeah. Pompanessa? Yeah, do. You don't want to run it down the road. The yeah, area. well, the question is was it going to run into the creek over there in Pompanessa? Was it Dean's Pond or the extension of Dean's Pond? Yeah, Elizabeth Island Road somewhere up there. Yeah. 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 No, I understand. I mean, it was this this whole project has been approved by Concom. But that's typical with any, when anyone has a pool, they're going to have to, in the winter, drain it down to that level. So I don't think condition on um, right. well, hopefully, hopefully, I'm sure conservation my, my opinion was is involved in this. It's a <laughs> conservation issue, and they it's have no comments. problem with the program. Yeah. Um, conservation. comments by conservation yeah. says commission approved additions to dwelling, as well as as well hardscape, landscape, mitigation, and modifications to appear on the property. No mention. Right, and they didn't mention it. No mention of a pool. Really not our okay. Yeah. We do have one small thing on the plan. So yeah. um, okay. Is the sunroom a heated space? Or is that? It says sunroom on the second floor. Is that yeah, a heated that's space? A that's a closed heated space. I don't know if Board of Health can have an issue with that. Without their, I don't know if you've talked to them about They might have an issue with the doors. Yeah, it's, that looks like a fifth bedroom. It's a four bedroom system. Yeah, Board of Health uh, indicated septic was approved and installed for four bedroom. 
before new town IA regulations in the state Title V. Recommend looking into upgrading septic tank to IA technology while construction is going on before state enforces mandatory upgrades. So it's approved as a, for a four bedroom, not a so five. I, yeah, so I'm, it's a board of health issue. It'll probably come up when you submit, go for a building. But I, I just usually bring those up. Well, when they, they when they do the inspection, right? right. Well, it's not the inspection, it's when they do, do the plan. permit. <laughs> they get oh, the permit. Board of Health is going to look at that. And I think they're going to have it. I would assume they're going to have an issue with that. Well, wait a minute. Didn't they comment? They didn't yeah, comment. They did. and I don't know if they picked up on it. I don't know. No, I mean, they commented. So. They commented it's a four bedroom system, but right. not counting five. We do, they get provided the plans. Only a volunteer. It, it, will, it will be sent to them for plan review. I mean, Mike, do you agree that? That's usually their typical Board of Health. Usually, yeah, they, may, they, may just, they may ask I know they let them make them smaller, so they might say remove the doors. Yeah, they, they may. I'm just it's bringing up them. now, just so you'll know. Okay. It could come back. Dave. What did I say? <laughs> no more permits for him. <laughs> wow, can't believe I just went there. I, I don't have any other comments as far as the board's time board. Read the two in. Hmm. It's only been, what, two years you've been here now? Uh, <laughs> any questions or well, concerns here? Yeah. Senior, like senior moment. <laughs> Where did you get there, kid? Brad's on it. Yeah. Brad's on it. Yeah. Any questions or concerns, Brad? Scott? No, that was my, I just wanted to bring it up as a, just something to roll when you go to people. I'm fine with it. It's not really a zoning issue. Good. Okay, we've read the comments in. Anybody in the audience <coughs> have a comment on this? Okay, Ron, would you make a motion on the public comments? Yeah, I'd like to close public comments in reference to the written finding under, under section 174.17. for Nissa, Nissa R. Knight and Patrick J. Knight of 25 tied run. Move a second? Second. Okay, uh, Brad seconds. Uh, Brad, how do you vote? Yes. Scott? Yes. Ron? Yes. Yes. I vote yes. Okay, the public comment is closed. All right. Ron, would you make a motion on this hearing? Yeah. Uh, one second, just making a note. Take your time. Yes, I would like to make a motion that we issue a written finding to Nissa R. Knight and Patrick J. Knight of 25 Tide Run. Said written finding is under section 17417 and 17433 zoning bylaw to allow for a garage addition, alteration, extension to a pre existing non conforming single family dwelling and property located in R3 zoning district and Little Neck Bay zoning district map 126, parcel 40, mastery mass with the following conditions. One, the board has determined the applicant meets all the conditions of a written finding on a master of law 48, section 6. Two, Site plan prepared for Patrick J. and Nissa R. Knight Project 25 Tide Run, Mastery Mass, sheet number one of one, date January 5, 2022, drawn by JVB RLR, checked by MC, prepared by Cape and Islands Engineering Drawing Title, proposed site improvements and dock maintenance plan stamped and signed by Matthew C. Costa, professional land surveyor number 52282, and Paul. Lazard Rivera, number 46845, three house plans prepared for night residence, 25 Tide Run Mastery Mass, Architect RISCOM, Architectural Inc. date 01-16-23, revision date 4-4-23, General A0, Foundation Plan A1, New First Floor Plan A2, New Second Floor Plan A3, Roof Plan A4 Elevations, A5 Elevations, four, Condition All Town Department Comments Read right in the Record, number five, the board finds that the proposed project is not substantially more detrimental than the pre-existing non-conforming structure used to the neighborhood. Six, condition that any changes to the plan to require the applicant to return to this board. Seven, condition this the board is requiring and prior to submittal of a board of health plan uh, of a building permit on this lot, a, a an AIA system approved by the Mashpee Board of Health will be required on this lot. Do we have a second? Brad, you second? Yes. All right, Brad, how do you vote? Yes. Scott? Yes. Ron? Yes. Bill? Yes. I vote yes. Great. Thank you very much. Nice project. Thank you. Be a nice, nice upgrade to that neighborhood. I took a look at the house. <clears throat> it's in the district.
That's a big upgrade to that piece of property. Did you get out and look? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that house is pretty, pretty tough shape. The Lapitania. Yeah. Bob, you're gonna sit on the next one. Okay. It's uh, under other business. Oh, make sure we don't turn it down. Okay, we still working. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta sign some stuff. Coming back here. Thank you. Yeah. Just just waiting. <coughs> He's just waiting. <laughs> he can't wait to get to that boat. <laughs> when are you leave the mom? No, it's fine. Where are you going? Mm -hmm. He said he had to be out there by nine o'clock. He's so. already there. He just he, <laughs> he see he's already there. <laughs> he's at the pier. <laughs> Everybody needs Signatures? Whatever you want. It's every, except on your tibia. You don't want to break in your tibia. <laughs> that is true. That, that is, is true. true. Yes. <laughs> Nobody wants true. that. Charlie, would you hey, make the first? All right, we have unbelievably reached other business. Uh, 81 Bluff Avenue, board to vote whether the architectural design change is considered a major or minor modification pursuant to 174-24C9A of the zoning bylaws. Good evening once again, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Attorney Christopher Corain representing the Lenharts, owners of 81 Bluff Ave. Uh, board is well familiar with this project. It was approved uh, as a raise and replace. Um, there was a request for a minor modification for a widow's walk that was approved by this board. Uh, during the discussion regarding the widow's walk, uh, building commissioner uh, noticed a discrepancy with a second floor balcony where it was originally shown as four feet by 14 and the new plan showed it as six by six by 14. So there was a two foot extension difference um, and approximately that I guess that leads it to about 28 square feet of additional uh, lock coverage. Uh, so my clients are seeking a permission from this board to administratively approve the six by 14 and a half uh, balcony, second floor balcony. It doesn't affect any of the setbacks that were approved by this board because it sits further back than what's at the front yard. The lock coverage goes up minimally, but still under what was already existing on the property. May I speak, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'm upset at this effort. And I'll tell you why. I spent the time with Marianne. I looked at the actual plan. I looked at the block, the title block. And in that block is revisions. There's nothing in that title block. Right. Anyone that is an architect, a registered certified architect, knows engineers, you know, they all know when you make a revision, you put the revision in the block, you put the date and what the revision is. I don't know how many times tonight. I've read, read plans that say revision and what it is and what the thing. I'm not happy about this. Understood. For me, my attitude is amend the plan correctly, show the revisions, bring it, this is my opinion, bring it back to the board, and then we make a decision whether it's a modification or it's major or minor. I'm going to agree with this, Ron. Period. And it, it, whatever. This, this is upsetting as hell. Somebody needs to learn how to do a set of plans and make revisions there, too. Luckily, he caught it. But we would have approved a plan that indirectly approved the change. Wrong. That Very upset. Change that that not included that, on the plan. Exactly. That was on the plan, but wasn't told but to this board. Done. He picked it up, and you know Scott has picked up a couple. But this one's very upset. And, and frankly, 
I'm not, I, I'll abstain if asked to vote on it, but frankly, I'm against this it. This is multiple times they've come back for different things. For you know, I, this, I, is the, I, this is the second time. It's just very, very frustrating to me because we should be able to rely on a title block and look and see what those revisions are. This the same it would have said in the revisions yeah. that the, 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 the deck was revised also in the date. That's BS. It's wrong. Is this the same one that they, to get through the first time they pulled the widow's walk off and they came back and put the widow's walk back in? Yeah, there the was a, there, it was a little bit confusing on the, there was a set of plans that had a widow's walk on it, but it wasn't provided to the board at the time of the meeting, so we had to come back. Yeah, see, I understand. I, I'm not, it's, it's wrong. wrong. It, was it was slippery. It's, it's all that's wrong. It, it yeah. shouldn't, until it's completely done, you shouldn't come here. So well, fix the plans, right. submit them to the board, and I think at that point in time, the board should make a decision whether it's major or minor. Because the plans aren't are even right. Correct now. The site plan is yes. Absolutely. The site plan. No, is, but the building plans are not correct. The building right plan, now. Right. It doesn't have the. The building plans that are on our yeah, file. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised we don't have a building plan in front of us showing us. So the well, building plans that Mary Ann has in the file they're right not now correct? are not do not have revisions on the okay. title block. They're, they're wrong. Correct. They're not correct. I, I, I agree with it. I understand. So I will have the architect do what he's supposed to do. <laughs> Good way to put it. I mean, I, I, I'll tell you, I did ask him to do it the way you're asking to well, do it. Well, maybe he'll do it now. <laughs> well, 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 now. No, no, He's going to come this board. I'm more than happy to vote against this application. More than This is other business. This is other business. So, no continuing. Okay. I'll just file it. I'll, uh, in, <laughs> file a new I'll file the new plans, and you can put it on when <coughs> it's a bit when the board has business. under other business. Because yeah. I say, I mean, this, notwithstanding the issues with the plans, you know, we're, we're asking for a, I, I would suggest it's pretty minor. Exactly. Well, I'm, I'm not so sure. <laughs> I don't, I don't I'm not sure if it's mine. Not until I'm not sure if it's mine. For me right now, it's major. It's a, it's a major modification. It changes lot coverage. Major modification for me. I just don't like the way the whole process went from the first time till now. Yeah. It, it should never happen. It just, as my opinion is one person, it's very slippery. The way they went about it. Yeah, I think part of the problem, and I'm not making any excuses for anybody, you know, I think part of the problem was they tried to, you know, it was right before town meeting trying to get it in to, you know, yeah. so they didn't get, you know, affected by the potential of the raise and replace being yeah. removed. They had a time to, to, to correct this situation. No, I understand. Period. It's, so. I will make sure that it's done the way the board requests. We'll okay. See. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much. As always, a pleasure. Have Thank a great you. night. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Enjoy. You hey, see it. you later. You see Mike say hi. Thank you. That's fun, Dave. We have Pesci's bill. Do we do that tonight, too? Yes. Why don't we do it right now? Okay. Uh, well, would you like to make a motion? Um, let's see. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, is this it the is. bill here? There it is. The 3121? Yep. Yeah. So I'd like to make a motion that I believe we're holding funds on this. <coughs> Not yet. Oh, with the five thousand was in the motion prior to. Right. So once the five thousand is posted, I make a motion that we recommend to the whoever pays the bills of this town to pay Mr. Pesci his three thousand one hundred twenty-one dollars and thirty-five cents out of the five thousand dollars that has been requested to be posted. Yeah. yeah. I'll second that. Okay. Bill seconds. Uh, yes. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 All opposed? Nobody. It's unanimous. Okay. The only other item on our agenda is the vote to reorganize board member appointments. Okay. We need to reorganize the board by electing a new chairman, vice chair, and clerk. I've been on this board 19 years. You're not that old. As of October. That's a long time. I've had the honor, honor of chairing this board for probably about the last 12 years. As of right now, I'm not going to accept a nomination for any of the three positions on the board that I've just mentioned. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I want to say thank board. you very much. I will stay on the board, but I, I'm not going to take one of the 
positions, if not. Uh, normally, I would ask Bill, I would recommend or nominate Bill to be the next chair. Is he's been here probably 15 years. 16. But 16. Years. <laughs> That's good. But who's counting? Yeah, who's, yeah. And uh, I think he's got something to say about that. Yeah. John, John asked me about this. Uh, he told me what his plan was that he didn't want to be chair anymore, that he wanted to continue on the board, and wanted to know if he could nominate me for the, for the chair. I told him with some of my vision issues and other commitments that I really didn't think I could accept that. And therefore, I would like to nominate Ron Bonvey as our next chair. Before we get into it, do we have other nominations? With that nomination, I don't think we need any other nominations. I think that's I the perfect. Ask. I know. I think that's the perfect yeah. choice. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. A second. Yeah. You have three seconds. I'm not sure who was first. <laughs> you have three seconds. Doesn't matter. I think it was. Let's say it was Bob. All right. Uh, Bob, how do you vote? I vote yes. Brad? Yes. Charlie? Yes. Scott? Yes. yes. And I'm not going to ask you. No. Yes. Bill? Yes. And I vote yes. Well, thank you very so much. So it's unanimous that Ron will be the next. And I, and I want to say, Jonathan, I think this, well, I know this town owes you a debt of gratitude for all your time and effort that you've put into this town. And I got to tell you, I've learned a lot from you <coughs> since I've been on the board, and I will be leaning on you big time going forward. So, again, I, I hope the town understands what you've done for this community and been a lot of hard work, I'm sure. I, I, I hope that isn't what I envision, but I think it's going to be. You no, know, you know, what, what John has done is he's brought calmness to everything that we do here, which I think is the most important thing. And a lot of knowledge. And the, and the knowledge. 19 That's years good. brings a lot of knowledge. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot of time to get to that point. Thank I you. hope that I can do as good a job as you've done, John. I'm sure you will. You will. Now, we have to vote on a nomination for vice chair. Bill, would you like to make a nomination? I'd like to nominate Scott Goldstein as the vice chair. Do we have any other recommendation? I don't know if I want to accept it, though. Come on, Scott. I don't mind being a board <coughs> member, but I'm, a sp I'm planning on spending more time away than here. If you step down or you have to go away, you should cover Okay, then, then if you got works. But then if you're okay with that, if I'm because the, I'm okay the, with the that. weather changes, I'm going to be here less. Whether or not I miss meetings, I don't know. John and I both had to step down or both been away, and you guys. But I don't, away. I'll tell you right now, I don't feel comfortable when Ron's not here leading the. Uh, yeah, but you got you to you help. And you, uh, they're still here. They're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. They're, they're staying yeah. on the board. I'm just saying I don't feel comfortable leading. I've been doing it for a while, but not that long. That I, I don't feel comfortable leading I, Well, no, right off the bat, be I have a lot of confidence in you. I appreciate I that. Have but total confidence. I mean, I, I would have been concerned like you're concerned for my appointment, but with them yeah. staying on. Yeah. Yeah, them staying on, it's, it's just, you know, you've dealt with, you've been just doing a long time dealing with the situations with a crowd like tonight. It's just, I'm you, not sure if I'm up patience? for it. And I'm yeah. the only, only other full board member, so I'm automatically going to have to be the clerk. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to do the motions? Are you going to, can you can Bill would not be good at the motions, yes. Yeah, because of that, seen. so. I can't. But anybody could do the motions, right? That's, That's correct. Well, it's anybody really Ron's decision. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's As to who makes the motions. Right. Will you make the motion and you can name anybody? And I, you know I can't do it. So okay. I think we've got to can we, we get can all customer get, with the, you know, oh, Yeah, it's going to be, because there could be times in the winter we're both not here. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Listen, we're all, you know, we're only here to help. That's all we kind of works. You know. So okay. do we have a second? Well, well, second that, do we have any well, other, other nominations? I nominate Scott Goldstein to be vice chair. He's only the same. I nominate Scott. Okay. We have a second? Jolly seconds. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Close.
<laughs> Sorry. What, one no, other thing. What, uh, Sharon has not yet been appointed. No, 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 that's a whole. Do we do, we do anything with that? That's a different kettle of fish. That's a whole other story. I saw the. It's nothing I believe against her. It's the a process. I understand. It's a process that I didn't understand myself. <clears throat> I think I, they'll um, get it. I never understood. It's it. a change after 18 years. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Crazy. Okay. I'll leave it at that. Good meeting, John. Good oh, meeting, anyway. everybody. We have to. That was the best motion. Clerk, we have to nominate here. for clerk. I'd Wait. like to nominate Bill. Mm. Do we have any other nominations? No, but I'll second. No. Okay, <laughs> Scott seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> oh. Okay, so we have Ron as chair, Scott as vice. That's and a bill as good group of people. Clerk. And we still all I will tell four you. Four <laughs> regular <laughs> board members. You know? but I, I'm just going to be up front was, because uh, I'm still running a business. Tabled. Like, I, know, know, too. I know. I know. Select board. That oh. I can't put in the amount of time that you guys put as in. I don't think you all the that other stuff. You correct how many you all that stuff. Everything, so even though we've been doing, doing, doing the same thing. I just don't have the, the same time. way. I don't mind doing this kind of thing, but I can't go to the board of the you know, yes. Understood. design review. Okay. I never asked that question. So, what other things does he do? He goes to plan review. Design review. So, are you going to keep doing that? Uh, that's can be it's anybody. your choice. It's you or your designee. Right. It's your choice. But, it can be but you can think about that. Why don't we? Somebody make a motion to close we'll this. Move that we uh, close this kind of late. I'm going. Well, second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. Oh my God. Let's wait till we turn off. You know what you could do, Ron? You could. Be.